for prologue in the first chapter for that new story too, if you just want to read it. Oh hell yeah! At any point in time. I do indeed. All right. It's going to be very very. Oh sorry. Oh, uh, we are live. This is Sound Booth Theater Live. Thank you everybody for coming and joining the show. And we have with us now Kerberos, our author of Summoner Awakens. Um, so today I'm actually starting on chapter four because I got through chapters one through three yesterday. I know that's cheating, everybody. This is cold reads. I should have started from the beginning, but uh, I didn't want it to be that cold of a read because I wasn't confident when I first started narrating yesterday that... I would do anything but uh, stumble around this main character and his accent. But it turned out I was wrong. I, f I, I jumped right in. I got three chapters done in almost no time. Um, and that, it's already about 10% of the story. Um, so I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty comfortable. I'm feeling good about Rowan. Um, and uh honestly uh the the things that i'm a little bit more concerned about are the the female voices um like aurora you know i i feel like my voice is changing kind of rapidly over the past couple years and it's getting harder and harder for me to do female voices but um you know i'll i'll power through these and i don't know if they if they bother me too much i might have to recast our females in this series. I know you would all be so disappointed if we did that, but, <laughs> but uh, it, it may it may have to happen. So, Kerberos, thank you for joining us, and uh, uh, I'm I'm happy to have you here, and you know happy to have you uh, you know watch watching what I do, and happy to have you you know stop me and correct me on anything. But uh, I had. A couple questions about this series so far book two it's yes. what half the size of book one mm, about i mean that's pretty much half uh three quarters book two ended up being somewhere around 88 89 thousand words um book one just did cross after finishing editing book one crossed 151 mm -hmm. give or take um book two was always meant to be the shortest in the series it was just a uh, it, book two is pretty much a full team building exercise. Uh, mm -hmm. Getting get the main characters getting to know each other, uh, getting to know a couple of new characters kind of doesn't really push along the plot a little bit, but gives a, some more background to uh, what's going on behind the scenes in the rest of the world. Um, kind of gives you a better view of the tower and exactly a little bit more about what climbing the tower entails. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, then book three, we get back heavy into the plot, and it's probably going to be the longest in the series. Um, and I'm hoping to finish book one of my new series uh, by June to July, and then I want to tackle book three, and it'll probably take me a good eight to ten months to finish writing it, as long as it's going to be. Okay, so you're just you're you're not working on them simultaneously; you're going back and forth. Correct. I, I tried to do the simul simultaneous bit, but it just felt like. Uh, I was losing something between jumping from one character to another, um, and I didn't want to do that. Gotcha. Um, so, wow, eight to ten months for a pretty damn long book. Uh, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm I'm glad that you're doing a one book a year pace for these series, considering you know um, I'm trying to reduce the amount of authors I'm taking on in the first place, and so you know. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm glad I won't have to stress out trying to catch up with you. Um, but, um, yeah, so this book, uh, we start off with Rowan and Aurora and Nathaniel, um, basically getting their party official, officialized contractually. Um, and, uh, then they sort of set off and kind of start to get to know each other. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to get to know all of them some more as we go, but I noticed, and just in case anybody here is concerned about this type of thing, I'm going to spoil some stuff, uh, in chapter three, I believe, um, Rowan, uh, everybody reveals their origin cards, and I expected Rowan's, uh, sort of reset power to be exposed here. But it didn't happen. Um, and he still doesn't really tell them about that. 
can you talk about that choice and um, what what is what is Rowan thinking here? Um, the goal is to, like I said before, I, the goal of this book is to get to know everyone um, and basically set up his big reveal that basically the apocalypse is coming. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping to tackle that in book early in book three. It was meant to be to the whole team, but as you'll find out once you're finishing up this book, uh, some stuff happens and there's more excitement and he ends up revealing a secret a little earlier and a little more rushed than what he intended to. Um, it doesn't happen in this book, but it'll happen in the beginning of the next book. But um, I, I wanted to make sure I didn't want to rush uh, his big reveal. One thing I, I hate about a lot of the stories, uh, especially with Isekes and with um, uh, time travel series and anything to that effect, portal books, I really hate how uh, it's just this big secret for the whole series and nobody ever finds out how the character knows this or how he's special or um, and he never communicates or he or she never communicates uh, what's going to happen in the future with their partners or friends or trusted ones. And with that, with that lack of communication, a lot of trouble could be circumvented. Um, mm -hmm. And I just want him to build trust with all of the current characters in the series before he goes revealing a secret. But I don't want him to keep that a secret forever. In fact, I'm hoping eventually he can reveal it to the whole tower. Um, but we've got to work up to that point. Sure, uh, sure. He's got to be strong enough to protect himself and his friends before he does that. Um, so one one thing that I I felt was kind of missing from book one was I was more I was curious more about the mechanics of the card system. Um, mm -hmm. Do we get do we get more into that in this book? We do get a little bit more into that. Um, it's not heavily touched on, um, but uh, book three is going to have a whole training arc where. You know, a, a lot of uh, it isn't shown because Rowan knows all of it already. He's coming back from an age. He's already learned everything. He's coming back from a, a basically an ancient bodied self that uh, comes back into the past, already knows how to control the cards, how to control the spirit, how to interact, uh -huh. you know, make the two interact with each other. And um, whenever he starts training uh, the younger ones uh, in book three, uh, that's plan. We plan on getting into more detail on exactly what's going on behind the scenes and how the cards work. Great. Well, I'm really excited about that. And I actually forgot to uh, shout out to Twitter and Discord that we're doing this. So I'm doing that right now. Uh, there we go. And where is my Discord? Sorry about this, guys. All right. So, um, all right. So we get a little bit more of the the mechanics of the card system. Um, we're going to watch Rowan now. Okay. So, one thing that I found cool about Book One is he goes back, but then he doesn't necessarily choose the same powers that he chose in the first place. He's kind of choosing a new path. So there's still going to yes. be some learning involved for him, but he's got right. all this experience of, of the, the, the time overall, and he's going to be coaching the other, the other two in the party about how they're leveling up. For instance, um, Aurora, you know, he discovers, Hey, you know, maybe you're the type of person who does more area of effect type stuff. So, or who, who likes to stay in the back, but maybe, maybe you'd like to do area of effect. Maybe you'd like to do healing, but, um, he's, he's kind of coaching them and, and, but both of those two characters know something is up. There's even a, a part where Aurora is like, so are you, you? <laughs> <laughs> and he says, well, <laughs> kinda, kinda, yeah, right. Um, so is that going to be a, a, a problem for, th for them going through the, the beginning of this book? Are they going to be uh, more and more suspicious of him as time uh, They are. Um, that's something that actually does happen in this book. Uh, I did get a few complaints. There's a massive bit in the center where all of the characters' cards are revealed. It's kind of a, a slug of about maybe 9,000 words, give or take, uh, a little bit less. Um, 
and, but they're padded with Aurora's taking notes in a notebook. And while she's taking those notes, she's discussing, you know, her theories about Rowan in, in uh -huh. her little notepad. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, they continually get suspicious, but they also, uh, realize that they can trust him and his decisions more and more, especially toward the very end of the book. Um, and by that point, they're just gung ho, uh, all, all for Rowan, uh, want to make sure that they're in his team, know that good things are happening, big things are going to happen. And, um, and that, that really does help lead into the reveal in the next book. It gotcha. gets to a point in this book where they don't care what a secret is. They, they know that they want to be on his team. Gotcha. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm just about ready to get started here. Do you have anything that you wanted to talk about before we get started? Not unless anybody has any questions. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if we have any questions here in the stream. Where are you from, Kerberos? Uh, Cheryl Hutcherson says, sounds like he's from my neck of the woods, which would be really cool. Um, I'm from out in uh, North Carolina, uh, close to the beach, or I guess close 40 minutes is relatively close for me i guess it depends on where you're at in the country and how often you drive but as someone who drives two to three hours a day for work and has for years 40 minutes is pretty close oh wow great um our uh director of operations is from north carolina as well she, she lives there okay <laughs> chris herp says is yakima referenced no no, it's, nah. it, wait, there's no Yakima in North Carolina, is there? Not in my neck of the woods. <laughs> uh, Ali Kovac says, please come to Dragon Con. I would love to, and it depends entirely on um, our family situation okay. and whether or not I'm able to you know, get away from the wife and the kids. Uh, I was suggested last year, I, I talked about going this past year, but I was suggested that it's shouldn't bring the youngins um mm. and it depends on if the baby's ready to spend the night off or not whenever dragon con comes around this year right right well sbt's always have has a has a big uh presence there and we're gonna have a very big presence there this year um i don't know if any of you guys were there last year in 2023 when we had lit rpg under the sea at the atlanta um the atlanta aquarium which was incredibly fun and incredibly expensive, and we're never doing that again. Um, but uh, that was a that was a an event that was not in any way sponsored by Dragon Con. It was not involved with Dragon Con at all. But when they saw what we did there, first they got mad because <laughs> we were taking people away from their event. Then they were impressed, and so. We may have something going on that's actually backed by Dragon Con this year. Um, something pretty big. So if you guys have not already, start planning to make it out to Atlanta in November, is it? Let's see. August. Sorry. August. That's... Oh, wow, that's close. Oh, man. So in August. The end of August. Uh, August 29th through September 2nd. So thank you, uh... Thank you to Ali for reminding us about Dragon Con. Uh, Cheryl Hutchinson says, oh, okay, Southeast still, so I guess I was picking that up. I'm in Alabama. Um, okay. All right. All right, so uh, here we go. Let's get started on uh, Summoner Awakens. Let's see. I There it is. All right. Here's the script. All right, and as I said before, guys, I feel pretty good about uh, having taken back um, the voice for for Rowan. Um, let's see how well I can keep it up today. And uh, there, there were some notes that uh, Carabros gave me about the the last book. Um, not not many. One of the ones that stuck in my head was I think uh, you you were not so fond of some like the frequency of the tapped r's i still have it in there but i've reduced the amount so nice all right chapter four blood i dashed from the second story window and used featherfall to land softly on one of the adjacent buildings 
My steps made little noise against the wooden rooftops of the smaller businesses as I ventured away from the inn, and my body felt light from the effects of my cards working together in the dead of night. Shroud, they whispered. Tendrils of shade snaked out from the night, surrounding my skin and covering my person. I tapped the shaft of the cane to my thigh, and the garments I wore instantly shifted to the attire left by my grandfather. The dark raven mask felt light on my skin as it materialized, and the darkness suddenly lit up like the day through its specifically crafted lenses. Likewise, my cane reverted to its original metal appearance, casting off its wooden veneer. Specially crafted. Ah, uh, did I say specifically? Mm -hmm. Likewise, my cane reverted to its original metal. Oh, no, no, no. The dark raven mask felt light on my skin as it materialized, and the darkness suddenly lit up like the day through its specially crafted lenses. There we go. I was no longer Rowan Wilder. On this night, I was. Rev Ravan of the Legionnaires? Raven. Raven. On this night, I was Raven of the Legionnaires. On this night, I was Raven of the Legionnaires. I called the details of Shroud to my mind, allowing the additional influences of my other cards to show next to its current effects. Card name? Shroud. Class? Spell, rank, holy, level, three, essence, zero, not out of all, not out of one hundred thousand, description, for fourteen minutes, for fourteen minutes times the level of the wielder's wisdom, the caster embraces darkness, no, nope. for fourteen minutes times the level of the wielder's wisdom, the caster embraces darkness, becomes darkness. One hour, five minutes, eighteen seconds. Effect one. A blanket of darkness surrounds the wielder's skin, concealing their appearance. It does not extend to clothing or accessories. Effect two. While active, the wielder is twice as hard to detect by any form of divination effect. 2.66 times. Effect three. Effects are amplified Effects are amplified by 30% throughout the night. During the day, effects are weakened by 70%. 33%. 33%. 33%. 33%. 33%. 33 cool down, 6 hours. 4 hours, 30 minutes. This should be more than enough time to investigate. I leapt silently from building to building, movement and in... and integrate. I leapt silently from building to building, movement and integrate, heavily increasing my speed in the darkness. Within minutes, I was in the rather infamous northern quarter of the city. Within minutes, I was in the rather infamous northern quarter of the city, where it only took a moment to spot the cordon off tavern. Cordon off. Fuck. Within minutes, I was in the rather infamous, rather infamous, rather infamous. Oof. Within minutes, I was in the rather infamous northern. Within minutes, I was in the rather infamous northern quarter of the city, where it only took a moment to spot the cordoned off tavern. Man, cordoned off tavern, cordoned off tavern. Within minutes, I was in the rather infamous northern quarter of the city, where it only took a moment to spot the cordoned off tavern. A few local guards stood at the building's corners, watching the entrance, likely hoping the culprit would reappear. Do they genuinely believe she's still on the second floor? I shook my head. Casimira. Was this Casimira or Casimira? Cas. Casimira is long. Casimira is long. Casimira is long gone by now. According to the network, she ascended at an impressive pace until her crimes in that mining town. 
the causing to the network, she ascended at an impressive pace until her crimes in that mining town. That town was overseen by the... That town was overseen by the Church of Liberation and used to farm some of the materials needed to carve circuits. Even the influence of the v Vladimir name... Even the influence of the Vladimir name couldn't save her from their wrath. Even the influence of the Vladimir name couldn't save her from their wrath. The Inquisitors swarmed the exits and captured her before she could flee the floor. I backed away from the roof's edge and dropped silently into a nearby alley. The butt of my cane tapped lightly against the earth, and a dim, smoky light formed in a circle on the nearest wall. A young, ghostly figure floated out, wiping in his... A young, ghostly figure floated out, wiping his eyes sleepily. It's a bit late, boss. It's a bit late, boss. David thought through our link, then yawned. <sighs> nice seat. <laughs> Thanks, I chuckled softly. I'd like to take a... I'd like to look in the building on the next street. Care to have some fun with the sentries? David's sleepy eyes opened wide and he placed a hand over his lips, giggling. I stepped out of the alley, seeking... I stepped out of the alley, see... Ah. I stepped out of the alley, seeing the thick tendrils of my shroud dancing across my skin as I moved. Regardless of the situation, I had to admit that I was fond of this facade. I'm in position. What do you have in mind? Fear and a bit of frost, if you will. Not enough to send them running, but... Not enough to send them running, but enough for them to take my words seriously. I strolled casually down the centre of the cobbled street. I strolled casually down the centre of the... Centre of the cobbled street. I strolled casually down the centre of the... Centre of the... Centre of the cobbled... I strolled casually down the centre of the cobbled street, not bothering to hide my presence. My cane tapped quietly against the stone, eventually calling the guard's attention despite its muffled sound. The two groups stepped forward cautiously, weapons drawn. At that moment, I felt a chill in the air along with something else that I could only scarcely detect. The six guards that rushed from the shadows stopped in their tracks, and one of them even dropped his weapon. Halt! Who goes there? The guard at the front of the pack called out, though his voice was strained. I sent a swift thought to David to ease back on the fear. Without stopping, I moved forward at the same casual pace. The sentries seemed to calm slightly, but they stayed wary. The group's de facto leader stepped closer, the hilt of his sword shining with a dull light. Ah, still the same guy, okay. S Sir, I... His voice broke. What... Sir, I... His voice broke when I stepped into his spell's range. All six weapons clattered to the ground and sweat formed on their brows. The leader bowed nearly parallel to the cobbled walkway. F forgive us, sir. We have already informed the Church of Liberation of this matter. Uh, if we knew the Church of Damnation would be sending a representative... We would have better prepared for your arrival, sir. Oh? They're expecting the Inquisitors? Why would they be interested in this matter? Do you suppose the Church of Liberation can receive any information without our being aware? I asked calmly, after stopping just in front of the man. Regardless of my tone, 
his body began to shiver, and I could feel David slightly increase the strength of his fear. No, sir! We, we just... I slammed the butt of my cane into the ground, silencing the man. Is this on concrete? Are they outside? This is a kind of small backwater type deal, so it's mostly More cobbled like streets. Cobbled streets. Okay. I'm going to do a sound effects call here. pavement hard stone we'll call it stone pavement I kind of I just I kind of like the idea of 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 representing the cane as a character in in this book um, in the audio at least I feel like it's a big part of, of him so Wait, I can't hear that top channel of audio every time anyone else. Oh, okay, let me see. Let me see if I can fix that. Audio, yes, here we go, back. And can you guys still hear me? Oops. Hello, hello, can you still hear me? Hmm. Turn that off, that's for sure. And Universal Audio is on. Why is it not working? Oh, yeah, okay. People people can still hear. All right. Silencing the man. Step aside. Step aside. I'll perform my duties and be on my way. You are not to enter the scene until my departure, nor are you to speak to of... You are not to enter the scene until my departure, nor are you to speak of my arrival to anyone. You are not to enter the scene until my departure, nor are you to speak of my arrival to anyone, including the Inquisitors. Yes, sir. May Tara forever guide you. The men gave clumsy salutes and dispersed to the sides of the street. Overcast, I muttered and waved my hand toward the building, covering it in an opaque cloud that was further accentuated by the darkness. There were gasps from the watching guards as the structure seemingly vanished into the night. My shroud strengthened when I stepped through the mist, further ensuring my... Further ensuring... Structures... Why does this keep happening? My... Further... My... My shroud strengthened when I stepped through the mist, further ensuring my presence would remain obscure regardless of any detection methods. Finding out the Inquisitors were looking into this... Finding out the finding out the Inquisitors were looking into this surprised me. I wonder what else the network was missing. Why wouldn't the Church have Why wouldn't the Church have reported its involvement? My cane twirled between my fingers as I stepped over the shattered pieces of the front door. Overcast didn't hinder my vision, nor that Overcast didn't hinder my vision, nor that of my companions. But it would be impossible for the sentries to see through the fog in the dead of night, even if I used radiance within. So, because of that... Radiance, I muttered, casting the spell on a dark shape in the far... I muttered, casting the spell on a dark shape in the... I muttered, casting the spell on a dark shape in the far corner while willing it to reduce its coverage. Though it was my own spell... Its third effect would still reduce my chances of avoiding detection if I stepped within its bounds, so I only allowed the light to cover six metres. 
Let's kill my bone for now. It's third effect, though it was my own spell. Though it was my own spell, its third effect would still reduce my chances of avoiding detection if I stepped within its bounds. So I only allowed the light to cover six metres, keeping me just outside of its range. Bloody hell. What I saw when the glow illuminated the tavern was dreadful. Blood covered the place. Upturned tables, chairs, the floor, walls, and even the ceiling. It was splattered across the bar and onto many bottles and glassware behind the counter. The bodies were still strewn about, and I was immediately thankful my mask all but eliminate. And I was immediately... The body... The bodies were still strewn about, and I was immediately thankful my mask all but eliminated the smell. Examining the scene from my place in the darkness, I counted the bodies to the best of my ability. Unfortunately, some were torn and had been thrown about so wildly that it was difficult to keep track. Judging by the number of heads I saw, it seemed that there were at least six. I didn't spot any deck boxes, which wasn't unusual. Whoever happened upon the scene first had likely snatched them before reporting it to the guards. What's this? I knelt by the... I knelt by the edge of the light and scrutinized a path on the floor, using tracking. Despite its age, the trail glowed brightly. Not one, but two sets of bloodied footprints led to the door behind the bar, and no one had tried to cover them. My appraising eye showed information through the tracks as if I were looking at the owners. Name? Casimira Van... Casimira Vladimir. Class? Wielder. Deck count? Unknown. Total foundation level? Unknown. Skills? Unknown. Hmm. No different from Nathaniel. I can't see anything about her. Boss, it proves she was here. Name? Tiana Leach. Tiana or Tiana? It doesn't particularly matter, so... Brief mention. Tiana Leach. Class? Wielder. Deck count, zero. Uh. Not. Total foundation level? Total foundation level, not. Skills, not applicable. No cards. What was she even doing here? Finding nothing else of use, I was about to follow this lead, but then I noticed something peculiar. Every corpse that was still somewhat intact was missing its right hand. I took note of this oddity and revoked radiance, throwing the tavern into darkness once again. As an afterthought, I cast cleanse on the floor, walls and doors. Glancing internally at the description on shroud, I saw I could mon- Glancing internally at the description on shroud, I saw I could maintain the guise for the- tw Glancing, glancing internally at the description on Shroud, I saw I could maintain the guise for the next... Fucking hell. Uh, I need to, like, put my phone outside the office. Or buried under something. Here we go. Glancing internally at the description on Shroud... Glancing internally at the description on Shroud, I saw I could maintain the guise for the next... I saw I could maintain the guise. Glancing internally at the description on Shroud, I saw I could maintain the guise for the next twenty minutes. There wasn't enough time to wait for the cooldown to wipe the place clean, but it was more than enough time to escape the range of any divination spells granted to inquisitors working this low in the tower. Not that I be not that I believe they'll work in the first place. I stepped out from the ebony mist and withdrew the spell. The building reappeared, and the lead sentry came. F 
The building reappeared, and the lead sentry came jogging, came jogging forward. The building reappeared, and the lead sentry came jogging forward. Sir, do, do you have any orders? I glanced back at the dingy pub. Has anyone from Fool Shop entered since the incident? Fool's Hope. Fool's Hope. <laughs> um, do you mention it before Chapter 3? I uh, think maybe briefly two or three times uh, when they arrive. <laughs> Fool Show, of course. Derp. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like a, a random civilization that popped up in the middle of the floor way out in the woods. So, Fool's Hope. A place where fools can hope they can get better. Full shop. Derp. I glanced <laughs> back at the dingy pub. Has anyone from Fool's Hope entered since the incident? And were there any witnesses? Only the man who reported it, sir. No witnesses, and once we saw the carnage, we immediately sent word to the Church of Liberation at that... at the entryway. No wit... no witnesses, and once we saw the carnage, we immediately sent word to the Church of Liberation at the entryway. He replied cringing, and I was glad the shroud hid my smile. No witnesses? Then how did word spread that it was the Vladimir Sion that did this? Then how did word spread that it was the Vladimir Sion that did this? It seems there's more to this girl's story. It seems there's more to this girl's story. Very well. Return to your posts. Look at this. Why does it, it keep doing this? I, I don't know why, but every time I click, it seems to be like... Uh, only... Now that I'm mentioning it, it's not doing it. But it seems to... Vladimir S Highlight more than I want it to. Very well. Return to your posts. Return... Return to your posts. Return to your po... Very well. Return to your posts. I stepped into the shadows before the guard could respond, relying on integrate to obscure my movements. To obscure my movements. Yeah, a little belly... belly noise there. I step... I stepped into the shadows before the guard could respond, relying on integrate to obscure my movements. You're clear, boss. They all scampered back to the corners. David's voice echoed in my mind, sounding amused. Eh, I could probably do that better. You're clear, boss. They all scampered back to the corners. There we go. Thanks, David. Would you like to return, or would you prefer to stay for a while? I asked, recalling his attitude when he'd appeared. I... actually hadn't known that spirits could sleep. Would you like to return, or would you prefer to stay for a while? Well... Well... When Larry isn't moving stones about... When Larry isn't moving stones about, 
That golem is always making a ruckus, stacking the same few stones into a large pyramid only to start over again somewhere else when he's done. That golem... That golem is always making a ruckus, stacking the same few stones into a large pyramid only to start over again somewhere else when he's done. I think I'll float about if you don't mind. You're going to follow those tracks, right? The boy asked out loud, appearing from the wall beside me as I stepped into the alley. Okay, he's supposed to be... When Larry isn't with... Well... Let's move that to here. We'll switch the color. Is that the right color? Yes, okay. Me as I stepped into the alley. That's right. I nodded slowly. That's right. I nodded slowly. Wondering where... Wondering. Wondering. I nodded slowly, wondering where Larry had picked up such an odd habit. After deciding I wasn't interested enough to pursue the topic, I walked the long way toward the pub's back door. David, while you're here, there's something I'd like to ask you. Though, I'm not sure if it's personal. David looked at me curiously, so I continued. Whereabouts do you and the others get off to when you're not here? Out the office it goes. get off to when you're not here. Whereabouts do you and the others get off to when you're not here? Whereabouts do you and the others get off to when you're not here? Oh, we all go to the same place, David responded, turning around. David responded, turning around and floating backward in front of me. According to Rosie, the space was much smaller before and probably wouldn't have fit all of us. According to Rosie, the space was much smaller before and probably wouldn't have fit all of us. Larry says that his old wielder's space was smaller. Larry says that his old wielder's space was smaller than yours as well. Hmm. What's that? Hmm. What's the space like? Hmm. What's the space like? We reached the back of the pub, and I instantly noticed the tracks leading away from the exit. I turned to follow them while waiting for David's description. He thought for a moment, then snapped his fingers, and a miniature snow globe appeared in his palm. It's kind of like the spell you use. He smiled. There's a border that we can't cross, but inside of that border, there's a lot of smoke and mist. We can make that mist do what we want. When I first arrived, Rosie had turned the entire space into a large garden. I didn't disturb her work, just built a small cabin to store my... loot. A sphere filled with mist. I scrunched my brow and looked thoughtfully at the boy, who was scratching his cheek in embarrassment. That sounds eerily similar to what I see when I focus on my cards and so. Are my summons just floating around inside me? Or are they in another sm Or are they in another similar space elsewhere? We ambled in silence for a few more minutes, tracking the few blood stains that remained. They'd become infrequent and were harder to see, though my ability allowed me to continue. Luckily, it hadn't rained between the massacre and now. I turned my attention inward and looking at the rema I turned my attention inward and looked at the remaining time on tracking and shroud. There were approximately three minutes left on tracking and another ten on shroud. I need to pick up the pace. Pushing my skills limits, I reached the end of the trail with a minute left to spare. There, lying at the foot of a stone shack, 
was the near-naked body of a young woman, only a torn and bloodied curtain covering her lower half. I didn't have to get any closer to know she was gone. I walked closer. Sounded like a truck outside. I, w I walked closer and gently pulled away the filthy cloth to examine the body. The girl was young, no older than fifteen. Cuts and bruises covered her body, and her right hand was crushed beyond recognition. I thought of the bodies back at the pub. Each of their hands had been severed from their bodies. My grip tightened on my cane as I pictured what she must have gone through. David, is there anything you can do for her? Something like you did for Zachary? To make her final moments less... barbaric? He shook his head. Sorry, boss. Her soul is lingering. Her soul is lingering, but it's far too weak for me to interact with it. I reached into the small satchel on my hip and withdrew a vial of infernal wash. Cleanse would have... Cleanse would have left a trail. A few drops erased the filth from both the young woman and the scrap of cloth, which I then draped over a torso and as much of her legs as it would cover. I'm sorry I couldn't do more. I closed my eyes and sighed. Sighed. <sighs> it's time to go, David. I hopped onto the nearest rooftop and dashed away from the scene. We arrived at the inn before the ten minutes were up, and I leapt into the still-open window of my rented room while cancelling shroud and shifting into my usual attire. Nathaniel glanced over from where he was lying and gave me a nod. I was glad to see that he was still the only occupant. It wouldn't have been out of character for Aurora to head over from her room after thinking more... It, would... it wouldn't have been out of character for Aurora to head over from her room after thinking of more questions. Did you make that, uh, event you brought us here for? He asked casually. I shook my head. We were too late. Though, I'm not sure what I could have done to... What I found... We would have needed to arrive days ago to have stopped the true tragedy from taking place. Mm hmm. May I ask... May I ask what your goal is? Of course. I plopped onto the bed, face in Nathaniel, and unlatched my deck box, pulled out a few cards, and finally retrieved my remaining essence from the nearby table. I'm planning to prevent a chain of events that will lead to struggles in the future, not only for us, but for many others. Of course, I won't drag you or Aurora into it if I can't help it. Yep. If of course, I won't drag you or Aurora into it if I can help it. But right now I can't reach the floors I need to quickly and I need to. Of course, of course I won't drag you or Aurora into it if I can. Of course, I won't drag you or Aurora into it if I can help it. But right now I can't reach the floors I need to quickly need to quickly enough on my own. Fuck. Oh, thank you, Facebook user. They said, uh, this is rather amazing. I never really realized how using multi-track recording with utilizing those different tracks for the different voices makes it so much easier to track what you are recording for each voice. Yes. Of yeah, it's, it's so, it's so much better that way. So, cause like I can go five, six chapters and decide, you know what? I don't like this character voice. And then just correct all of those just go back only correct those character voices and it, it it's so much easier to do it that way of course i won't drag you of course i won't drag you or aurora into it if i can help it but right now i can't reach the floors i need to quick need to i need to quickly the floors i need to quickly enough on my own of course i won't drag you or aurora into it if i can help it but right now I can't reach the floors I need to quickly enough on my own. Ah, uh, it still doesn't sound right. I need to quickly enough on my own. Of course I won't... Of course I won't drag you or Aurora into it if I can help it. 
but right now I can't reach the floors I need to quickly enough on my own. You could, Nathaniel shrugged. Doing so as a party will just draw less attention. Surely forming a party full of high-ranking academy graduates and a scion of one of the descendant families makes it easy to hide in plain sight. There he goes again. In all my years, I've rarely met anyone as observant as him. I'll never understand how his family managed to hold him back in my last life. Forced to sign a contract, if I had to guess. I dumped my essence pouch on the comforter and separated a hundred thousand shards from the pile. Finally, it was time to make a decision. Condense, lock, summoner's blessing, or tame creature. Nathaniel glanced at me curiously as I pulled out the cards, and I motioned for him to come over. If you've... If you've no more questions about my intentions, what are your thoughts here? I asked. My mind was already made up, but this seemed an excellent way to help bolster our trust, something I felt might be necessary after my earlier declaration. I only have enough essence at the moment to level one. I watched with amusement as Nathaniel's eyes flicked between each of the cards, widening in surprise when he read the details on Tame Creature. This... promotion? Um, what does he mean by that? Like... At the end of book one, whenever they uh, won the promotion uh, prizes from completing the tasks on the first floor, the hidden tasks, um, he was basically just asking if he used promotion to level Tame Creature up to gotcha. higher ranks. Gotcha, okay. This promotion... This promotion... This... Promotion. That's right. I nodded. In the future, I expect most of our party's income will be from selling summons through Wielder's Wonders. Of course, I'd like to appear as a party hired by the business and not as the proprietor. I see. Nathaniel opened his own deck box and pulled out a card. I was surprised to find that it was a blessed... I was surprised to find I was surprised to find that it was a blessed tame creature. Before I could speak Before I could speak, he slipped his promotion relic from his jacket on a nearby chair and tapped it to the card. The card glowed briefly before settling down, and once it did, he tucked it securely back into his deck. Your build is intriguing. He stepped back to the side of the bed and looked over my shoulder. Without a faction, this can certainly increase your influence. As long as you aren't... It, as long as you aren't obstructed, of course. It's a fine start, I replied, then spread the cards out so that he could see them better. Mm. Luck, he scratched his chin. Your chance at a pure summon is already phenomenal. If you were asking my advice, I would focus... If, if you were asking my advice, I would focus on drop rate for now so that you can farm cheap summons to sell. Then, once we've passed the tenth floor, I'd say push more towards taming success. If you want to make the most of the early floors, that is. Of course, you knew that already. This act to build trust between us is appreciated, but unwarranted. If I didn't trust you implicitly, I wouldn't have joined your party. I smiled awkwardly and patted his shoulder. You're a good lad, Nathaniel. I'm not sure I've proven myself worthy of such trust. I'm not, I'm not sure I've proven myself worthy of such trust, but I promise I'll work hard to remain so. And yes... I was thinking along those lines myself.
One by one, I placed the essence onto the card. Each crystal turned black as the essence within was drained, and I tossed the shards into a nearby bin. They were all low-level shards, so it wasn't worth saving the husks. Nearly a half hour later... Card name? Look. Class? Enhancement. Rank? Holy. Level? Four. Essence? Not out of one million. Description. Increases the drop rate of all cards within the tower. The wielder must deal the final blow. Effect. Drop rate increased by 20% of existing rate. Not a significant bump, but that's one step closer to level 5. Not a significant bump, but that's one step closer to level 5. I tucked my cards back into their slots and turned to... I tucked my cards back into their slots and turned to Nathaniel. Can you do me a favour in the morning? Can you do me a favour in the morning? Of course, he replied, standing straight and nodding in affirmation. Take the remaining essence and replenish our ration supply. I would also like you to locate... I would, I would also like you to locate directional relics for each of us. Preferably, they should be linked, but I don't hold much hope for that in this town. I'll use that time to speak with the coachman and ensure she's... I'll use, I'll use that time to speak with the coachman and ensure he's trustworthy. We should be on the third floor in a day or two if all goes well. Nathaniel nodded once again. I'll set out early and see what I can find. Is there anything else? I'll set out early and see what I can find. I'll set out early and see what I can find. Is there anything else? I shook my head. For now... Just get some rest. I uh, don't imagine the carriages here will be as cosy as those on the origin floor. And that is a chapter. Man, that went by fast. 20 minutes. Feeling good. That is the author, Carabros, reading along, Mr. Gabriel Bully. Hello, Gabriel. All right. Get more coffee. It's good for the texture. All right. Chapter 5. End of the Path. Ow! Could you watch where you're going? Ow! Could you watch where you're going? For the umpteenth time, I listened to Aurora gripe as the carriage collided with a fallen branch. The path was abounding with potholes and roots. None. None. No, none of which the coachman bothered to avoid. Though this, though his cart hadn't been crafted with comfort in mind, it was durable, as were the tethers linking it to his... Damn. Though his cart... Though his cart hadn't been crafted with comfort in mind... And that sounded weird. <coughs> Though this cart hadn't been crafted with comfort in mind, it was durable, as were the tethers linking it to his two well-fed horses. I glanced forward, admiring the beasts. Name? Horse. Class? Equus. Rank? Origin. Level? Two. Description. A simple beast native to the origin floor. Typically roam in small herds across the grassy plains. These clever creatures can be captured and ridden even by non-wielders. Getting horses or other animal companions to the upper floors was a massive hassle. Just like their owners, they had to climb the stairs one floor at a time. 
This being the case, it cost an extravagant amount to drag an animal from one floor to another, and they had to be completely free of plague to pass through each barrier, which could easily be transmitted by scratches or bites from plagued beasts. I couldn't imagine the trouble it would have taken back in David's time. Some of the historical texts preserved over the years show that not o no. Some of the historical texts preserved over the years showed that only the wealthy could afford the services of those willing to transport origin creatures. Now there were breeders spanning most of the floors. Oops. Some of the historical now there were breeders spanning most of Now there were breeders spanning most of the floors. A steed born on a higher floor would be more formidable and live longer than any brought from below. Nope. A steed. A steed born on a higher floor would be more formidable and live longer than any. A steed born on a higher floor would be more formidable and live longer than any brought from below. The horses trotted. The horses trotted along. The horses trotted along, dragging us behind them with ease. I glanced at my wrist, where I'd clipped, where I'd. I glanced at my wrist, where I'd clipped the directional, the directional. I glanced at my wrist, I glanced at my wrist, where I'd clipped the directional relic onto the band my timepiece used to sit, onto the band my timepiece used to sit. I glanced at my wrist, where I'd clipped the directional relic onto the band my timepiece used to sit. Its face was a simple black plate with a pane of glass mounted above. A thick, foggy liquid filled the space between the two. There were currently four coloured specks floating within the liquid. One was red and would always glide against the outer edge in the northern direction. The other three were silver. The other three were silver. In the centre, an, immo an immovable... An immovable... In the centre, an immovable silver speck indicated his own unchanging position. As for the other two, both were pressed to the sides of the glass, each in the direction of where his companion sat beside him. The design isn't terrible. Of course, a more skilled artisan could have personalised the colours, but I'm impressed enough that Nathaniel managed to find a relic modifier at all on the second floor, let alone in the tiny town of Fool's Hope. There in the previous paragraph, where mm -hmm. it's talking about the silver speck, it should be my own, not his own. In the center, an immovable. His own. In the center, an immovable silver speck indicated his own. Oh, okay. So you want that corrected? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, this is this is Rowan's point of view, so that should be first person. In the center. Oops. In the center, in an in the center, an immovable silver speck indicated my own unchanging position. Three were silver. In the center, an immovable silver speck indicated my own unchanging position. hope plan on riding straight through plan on riding straight through or do you want to stop by the hot sites could get a kill or two in an inn could could get a kill or two in and replace the essence you're paying me eh Although it's strange we've only run into one pack, it is. Although it's strange we've only run into one pack, it is. The young coachman called without looking back. The young coachman called without looking back. No need. Just take us to the end. No need. Just take us to the end. I responded loudly, then watched his reaction closely. He seemed an honest enough lad. Neither him nor his father. 
Neither him nor his father had set off threat acuity when Nathaniel introduced us, but I still had David scouting above in case of an ambush. Fool's Hope wasn't well known for its hospitality, after all, and even if the two of them were trustworthy, that didn't mean someone less savoury hadn't sold them out. From what I'd read, all of the coachmen in the town worked under the same banner, so they were all aware of the routes and any deals struck. The coachman's eyes constantly scanned either side of the forest path, a long section of wood carved out by previous wielders for quick passage to the third floor. It would take us a fair distance into the forest, where we'd have to... It would take us a fair distance into the forest, where we'd have to then... It would take us a fair distance into the forest, where we'd have to then hike the final stretch on foot. Much like the first floor, the second through fifth had four deep ravines where wolves were abundant. On the second floor, the stairs were tucked within the ravine to the southeast. Over time, many generations had attempted to build and hold the area around the stairs leading up from each floor, yet those constructions were always met with some unavoidable natural disaster. Clearing the areas of natural growth was also useless, as it would swiftly regrow and the harvested material would turn to dust. The reason for this phenomenon that the reason for this phenomenon that began on the second floor was yet undiscovered, despite the many attempts at understanding. Even at the end of my previous life, the network hadn't made any advances in the matter, and the theories of the churches were seen as fact. Either Tara or the Tower didn't want humanity establishing a hold near those locations. Boss, you have a horde coming up around... Boss! You have a horde coming up of around a dozen wolves, only one corrupted. David's voice sounded in my mind. I've flown ahead. The path's clear after that. Thank you, David. You lot, look sharp. You lot, look sharp. I said loud enough for a... I said loud enough for the coachman to hear. Nathaniel was the first to snap his head up and peer toward the road ahead. Wolves incoming. Small horde. How do you know? Aurora asked, squinting ahead. I can't see anything, and my precognition isn't acting out. What's up? Uh, for that, how do you know? Just a little more skeptical. How do you know, Aurora? How do you know, Aurora? How do you know? Ah, oh, trying to get the donut out of her. <laughs> I can see that. Oh man, she's a bit of a smart ass too. Until she warms yeah. up and starts trusting her and more. Right now, she's still kind of kept skeptical, and you know that's part of the point of this book is to, you know, uh, yeah, build yeah. the team's trust. So. What? How do you know? Aurora asked, squinting ahead. I can't see anything. I can't see anything. And my precognition isn't acting out. You should watch where you mention that. I cut my eyes toward the coachman pointedly. He likely hadn't heard and probably wouldn't understand, even if he had, but it was best to get in the habit of being cautious early on, especially for someone just starting out. As for your question, as for your question, I'll answer that once we reach the fifth floor. Nathaniel presumably knows already, or at least has a hunch. I eyed the young man, who was calmly watching the path as the coachman slowed down, thanks to my warning. As for Aurora, I'd like to tell her but she needs to get used to the feeling of uncertainty. Her precognition likely isn't directing her due to my and Nathaniel's presence. Her, pre her precognition likely isn't directing her due to my and Nathaniel's presence. That's worrying. We'll need to find a better way to train her control over that enhancement so that she can use it adequately in the future. The horses slowed to a stop whinnying and drumming their hooves, hooves, 
Did I say hooves or hooves? Let's see. Hooves. Look at my hooves! <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys have seen uh, Freddy Got Fingered. <laughs> But when I hear that word, when I see that word, that's all I can think of. The horses slow to a stop. The horses slow to a stop, whinnying and drumming their hooves nervously on the dirt. However, they stayed hushed and didn't try to break away, revealing that they were trained well... Revealing that they were trained well, and this wasn't their first time being in this situation. <coughs> I'll take this one. I turned ahead, seeing a single wolf blocking the path. It was as large as the horses strung to the cart, its pelt a dark grey, and its bottomless eyes streaked with purple. Aurora, support Nathaniel with the rest of them. Nathaniel, let her get some work in, all right? Nathaniel nodded, and I leapt from the cart before Aurora could protest. My feet hit the earth, and I cast tame creature while dashing forward, quickly closing the distance between myself and the beast. Its head jerked in surprise, and it managed to release a partial howl just before the tip of my blade met its throat. The brush bordering either side of the path rustled violently, and a second later, just over a dozen wolves the size of large boars burst out, I didn't have time to assist with them, as my strike hadn't killed the corrupted. It snarled and swung a paw the size of my head at my chest. I dodged back and heard a tearing sound as one of its claws tore into my jacket. How did you not die? I squinted my eyes and read the beast's information while it tore it... I squinted my eyes and read the beast's information while it tore at its throat, attempting to remove my sword. Name, Hokkaido Deceiver. Class, Canine. Rank, Corrupted. Level, Two. Description, an intelligent beast that only spawns when every fleet in an area has been wiped clean. It is usually one of the most formidable of its rank and uses its wits and skills to hoodwink its opponents into leaving an opening. Skills, Bite, Slash, Alert, Commune, Rend, Mirage, Fade. I see. The beast was still slinging its head around in an attempt to dislodge the blade. I noticed that even though I'd aimed directly for its spine, my weapon had pierced the muscle a few centimetres to the right. What a clever beast. It never actually jerked away from my sword. What I saw was a mirage before it howled. I want it. The chances were slim, but I'd managed to get off Tame Creature before the beast was injured, so it wasn't impossible. I lifted my hand and cast pull. I lifted my hand and cast pull on my blade. The weapon squirmed in the wolf's neck, causing the creature to wail in pain before it finally dislodged and flew back to my open hand. Not wasting this opportunity, I sprinted at the gasping wolf, dodging its flailing limbs, and pierced my sword into its eye, using rends to ensure it would bleed to death in the event my strike didn't kill it. There was no need. Its body shuddered and went lip. Its body shuddered, its body shuddered and went limp before I could even withdraw my weapon. I turned to assist my companions, but it turned out to be unneeded. Aurora was standing in the cart, holding her hands out toward three wolves. Aurora, Aurora was standing in the cart, holding her hand, holding her hands, holding her hands. Aurora was standing in the cart, holding her hands out toward three wolves that had been trapped by her prismatic prison. The coachman had a dagger driven into the side of one, with another corpse laying nigh, laying nigh rear bearer. The coachman, the coachman had a dagger driven into the side of one, with another corpse lying nearby. On Nathaniel's side, on Nathaniel's side, eight corpses lay strewn about. Some hadn't even managed to reach the packed earth of the path. He looked up at Aurora before turning to me with a questioning gaze. 
pointing the tip of his glaive toward the three captured wolves. I nodded, and he sprinted in that direction. I nodded, and he sprinted in that direction. The movement was so instantaneous, I almost mistook his lunge for a dash. Satisfied that my assistance was unwarranted, I turned back to the oversized wolf and clenched my fists in eagerness. This beast was intelligent, and though it wasn't an unknown entity, they were a nuisance to drag out of the tower. As the description stated, beasts of this calibre within their rank typically only spawned when there had been... As, as the description stated, beasts of this calibre within, the within their rank... As the description stated, beasts of this calibre within their rank typically only spawned when there had been a mass slaughter of their kind. David said it was clear to the end of the path. Either there's a party farm... Either there's a party farming the ravine, or someone powerful wiped them out en route to the third floor. Neither circumstance is unlikely with the academy year having just ended, but I'll keep my eyes open just in case. David, is everything still clear toward the end of the path? I asked, glancing inwardly at his remaining time. He still had a little over an hour before he'd dematerialize. Not a single... Not a single growl, boss. He confirmed. After waiting a few more seconds for the cooldown on pull to end, I raised my hand over the corpse and focused on the essence I hoped wasn't there. My stomach flipped in anticipation when nothing... My stomach flipped in anticipation when nothing happened. And then there was a vulgar squelching noise as a crystal flew from its chest. Name, essence, rank, twenty. I sighed in defeat. Even with my greatly enhanced chances of receiving a summon, getting drops in the first place was just too uncommon on these early floors. We needed to reach the fifth floor as soon as possible if we wanted to start building our wealth and power. Excuse me. Wealth and power, where did that go? There it is. That was where fallen ranked beasts first made an appearance. Beasts that boasted a base drop rate of 10%. Though we might sacrifice some early rewards, we would make up for it quickly once we began selling summons. And with Nathaniel's origin card, I intended to ask him if he'd like me to procure him... I intended to ask him if he'd like me to procure him a look enhancement from the Church of Liberation. If so, his origin card would allow us to further capitalize on mine by increasing our chances of receiving a card in the first place. Luckily... As long as tame creature is used before a beast is injured, it doesn't matter who deals the final blow. Our cards are almost perfect for farming summons together. And if Aurora's or And if Aurora's origin card and if Aurora's origin card works on spells such as pull, we can even collect our rewards from afar once she's leveled it further. I'll just need to invest in Rowan any luck? Aurora's voice sounded behind me, and I heard footsteps casually approaching. I turned, showed them the essence, and shook my head. None of that here. Everyone holding up all right? We're fine. Nathaniel answered while the coachman crouched down next to the body of the ferocious wolf. He lifted its paws and looked over its teeth. Do you want to stop by the hot sites? Could get a ca What you planning on doing with it? He asked after it. He asked after his examination. He asked after his examination. I shrugged. We have no use for it at the moment. 
We have no use for it at the moment. We have no use for it at the moment. We have no use for it at the moment. There we go. Well, if you're all right with it tagging along, we can throw this in the back. And you don't have to worry about paying me for the trip. How's about it? <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> sure thing. There we go. That's it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> sure thing. I patted the man on the shoulder, then moved over to reach for one of its hind legs. Let's get it loaded. I'd rather not sleep under the stars tonight. The rest of the journey proceeded without incident. Aurora sat up front with the coachman, chatting away while staying as far from the corpse as possible. Nathaniel sat back comfortably with his legs propped on the beast's back and his eyes closed. Before long, we reached the end of the path, a bit later than intended, but there was still enough daylight to get to the stairwell. Here we are, lads, the coachman said as he hopped off his seat and offered Aurora a hand. And the young miss, of course. Now, if you're planning to reach the stairs before night falls, I'd go on a bit... Go on as a bit of a jog. If you're... If you're planning to reach the stairs before night falls, I'd go on as a bit of a jog. You ought to reach your destination within a few hours. Much obliged. Much obliged. Much obliged. I nodded my head in thanks. You're all right for a coachy. You're all right for a coachy. And you be all right for a group. And you be all right for. And you be all right for a group of posh youngsters from the academy. Your use of ye here makes me imagine a, a Scottish accent. Do you want me to fix that? Yeah. Whatever you think feels best. I think I think I'm fussing over nothing. And ye be all right for a group. And ye be all right for a group of posh youngsters from the academy. And ye be all right for a group of posh youngsters from the academy. No, I don't like it. As a bit of a jog, you ought to reach your destination within a few. And ye, and ye be all right. And ye be all right for a group of posh youngsters. And ye be all right for a group of posh youngsters from the academy. There we go. The man gave us a wink before hopping onto his seat and taking the reins. Stay safe, you hear? I'd best be getting what... I'd best be getting while this corpse is still good to gat. Best be getting while this corpse is still good to gat. He whipped the reins, and we watched as the cart sped back the way we'd come. The horses moved much slower with the corpse weighing them down. I had a feeling it would likely take the man an extra two hours at the look. I, I had a feeling. I had a feeling it would likely take the man an extra two hours at the least to get back to Fool's Hope. I had a feeling it would likely take the man an extra two hours at the least to get back to Fool's Hope. <sighs> All right, let's get moving. I adjusted my pack to fit more comfortably on my shoulders before taking off at a light jog toward the ravine. My two comrades swiftly caught up and ran next to me. <sighs> nope. All right. Wrong button. Wrong button. My two, my two comrades swiftly caught up and ran next to me, their eyes constantly scanning the trees. Trees. <laughs> Should we really be rushing through... Trees. Should we really be rushing through the floor like this? Aurora asked, glancing at a directional relic before looking at me. I nodded. Nodded. Mm -hmm. These lower floors aren't worth our time. We make it a few thousand extra essence or a weak relic here, but nothing so unique that we can't buy it in Oran's... Goddamn. Time. I can't ever retake sentences 
within a quote while they're breathing hard because then the breathing doesn't line up. Noted. Noted. These lower flow... Noted. These lower floors aren't worth our time. We may get a few thousand extra essence or a weak relic here, but nothing so unique that we can't buy it in Origin City. Origin City. If you think that's best... Aurora looked thoughtfully at the sky as we ran, and I frowned, unsatisfied. I didn't want either of my companions to feel like they couldn't ask questions, particularly when they were affected. If you have any questions about my decision, please feel free to voice them. Affected. If you have... I told her, then glanced at Nathaniel. Either of you. I'll be more than glad to answer the why, so long as you don't question the how of the matter. Nathaniel. Either of you. I'll be more than glad to answer the why, so long as you don't question the how of the matter. That's your heart, that's Nathaniel. <sighs> Either of you. I'll be more than glad to answer the why, so long as you don't question the how of the matter. Aurora shook her head. Head. I'm not as interested in the reward. Head. I'm not as interested in the rewards as I am in completing the tasks. But even then, that's not as important as me. Ah, oh, fuck me. Head. I'm not as interested in the rewards as I am in completing the tasks. But even then, that's not as important to me as reaching the 30th, 30th floor. Fuck me. Fuck. Fuck. 30th. That's where my father was in the last letter I received. Head. I'm not as interested in the rewards as I am in completing the tasks. But even then, that's not as important to me as reaching the 30th floor. That's where my father was in the last letter I received. <laughs> it's the tasks from every fifth floor we ought to be concerned with. I smiled. We've already completed the tasks. We've already completed the, completed the tasks. We've already completed the tasks here on the second floor. Slay one of each type of beast. It's the same on most floors, with every fifth being different. Don't worry, we'll reach the thirtieth soon enough. Slay one of each type of beast. It's the same on most floors, with every fifth being different. That's good enough. Soon enough. <sighs> Then I have no qualms in following your judgment. She reached toward her neck and clenched her fist around a pendant I hadn't noticed her wearing before. For <laughs> Have faith. I ducked a branch and began tracking to see if there were any threats nearby. I ducked a branch and began tracking to see if there were any threats nearby. I didn't want to call on David until we were closer to the stairs. Yes. We'll do our best to find him. All right. She gave me a sad... She gave me a sad smile before tucking the chain beneath her blouse. Something isn't right. I imagine they're walking by now. I sent you a uh, DM on uh, Discord as well. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Got it.
something isn't right. Excuse me. Aurora looked around, then glanced at me doubtfully. Every passage I've read said that the closer to the stairs one travels, the more beasts they'll encounter. We haven't seen a thing since the path. Are we, perhaps, heading in the wrong direction? A few hours had passed, and we were closing. A few hours had passed, and we were closing in on the stairs' location. The ground was cast in shadow, and we could see the orange of the sky peeking through the openings in the canopy of leaves. We'd long entered the tree and brushfield ravine. We'd long entered. We'd long entered the tree and brushfield ravine, and were nearing its center. My fingers clenched around the head of my cane, and I eyed Nathaniel. Who'd taken his glaive out nearly an hour ago? It seemed we all felt it. Something was wrong. And I, my, my fingers clenched around the head of my cane, and I eyed Nathaniel, who'd taken his glaive out nearly an hour ago. Fuck. My fingers clenched around the head of my cane, and I eyed Nathaniel. Who'd taken his glaive out nearly an hour ago? My at center. My fingers clenched around the head of my cane. Hour ago, it seemed we all felt it. Something was wrong. Where in Tara's name are all? Where in Tara's name are all the beasts? I gestured to my relic to show that we were indeed heading in the right direction. I gestured to my relic to show that we were indeed heading in the right direction. It spun wildly in circles, indicating that we were. It it spun wildly in circles, indicating that we were within the stairs' range of influence. Yet Aurora didn't seem convinced. Honestly, I didn't blame her. There hadn't been. There hadn't even been a howl since we'd entered the gorge, and this was where the wolves should have been gathered. David, are the stairs clear? How about the surrounding area? I'm not sure, boss. The response hadn't come immediately, and he sounded hesitant. How about the surrounding area? I'm. As far as I can see, there's nothing in the vicinity, but something doesn't feel right. Even now, I'm having to struggle to keep our link active. Something's interfering. Hmm. All right. We'll arrive in the next few minutes. Hold tight and inform me of any changes. I raised my hand and motioned for Aurora and Nathaniel to slow down and remain quiet. Whatever was happening certainly wasn't a product of the floor. Someone was messing with the natural state of the place. Is that what I think it is? Aurora's whisper cut through the silence like a knife. Following her gaze, I sighted an. Following her gaze. Following her gaze. I sighted an abnormal stone structure near a distant tree. Vines covered the object, and even from this distance, I could see the jagged edges of a broken wall. It is, I spoke softly. Though no structure stands for long, you can still find the remains of societies that made an attempt. Such sites will be more common the further we go. Now sharpen up. We've arrived. The dense brush opened up, revealing an open clearing with a single massive tree in its center. Much like the tree I'd seen in David's vision, this one's trunk was carved open, and sleek black stairs vanished into its trunk. Dimly glowing circuits ran down the stairs and spilled onto a metal path that extended for several meters before stopping at the clearing's edge. 
Nathaniel let out a heavy breath and slightly lowered his glaive as he examined the splendour of it all. Nathaniel let out a heavy breath and slightly lowered his glaive as he examined the splendour of it all. Splendour of it, splendour of it all, splendour of it all, splendour of, splendour of. Nathaniel let out a heavy breath and slightly lowered his glaive as he examined the splendour of it all. The orange sky blended perfectly into the back. The orange sky blended perfectly into the background, giving the scene a calming, almost divine sensation. I glanced around the glade and saw nothing out of sorts, yet that feeling didn't dissipate. Nathaniel likely felt the same, as he still hadn't fully relaxed his stance. Let's proceed, I said before stepping out of the woods, tracking already active and ready to dash at the first sign of trouble. But keep your wits about you. We were only a few dozen metres from the next floor. We were only a few dozen metres from the next floor, but the situation still didn't feel right. I scanned the surroundings. The area was wide open, and there was nowhere for anyone to hide. Even the branches above were in plain view. But there was something off about... Ooh, no! Okay. Do you smell that? Nathaniel asked, shifting his stance and looking around cautiously. <laughs> smell? <laughs> I breathed in deeply, and that was when I noticed it. The stench of alcohol was mixed in with the raw smells of the surrounding fauna. Click. My sword left its sheath, and I looked around warily. Liquor. And it's strong. Not the cheap st not the not the cheap stuff that should be found on this floor. Ah, this is your uh, your favorite character. Yeah, I figured. On this floor. <laughs> A deafening moan filled the clearing. I tensed and pointed my blade toward the noise, Nathaniel following suit. Aurora leapt back in surprise, but quickly gathered herself and prepared to cast a spell. That was when I saw him. There, a poorly dressed and dirty-looking man was slumped against the base of the massive tree. He wore no shoes, and his clothes were ripped and torn. Long grey hair and an unkempt beard covered most of his face. A crude walking stick lay across his lap, and he had an upturned... A, cru a crude walking stick lay across his lap, and he had an upturned bottle grasped in one hand. Scars marred both of his robust arms and one of his cheeks. I'd seen this man before. Does... does this man have a death wish? Aurora asked quietly. Who in their right mind would sleep out here like this? We need to go, I whispered. The stairs are right there. Let's move, quick and quiet. We proceeded forward cautiously. Twenty metres to go. Fifteen. Ten. Suddenly, the man was sitting cross-legged in front of the entrance. It was instant. One second, the path was clear, and then... Leaving sorts. <laughs> The man's words were interrupted by a sudden gasp of breath. He ignored us and lifted the bottle to his mouth, shaking it to force out a drop. Then, after a few failed attempts, he held the bottle to his eyes and looked into it. You... You... Got to be shitting me. Oi! Any of you lot got something to drink? Um. Uh. If I give you the essence for another, will you move aside? 
I asked, gripping my weapon tighter. The man squinted his eyes at me for a moment, and then jumped to his feet with a single movement. He pressed both hands to his eyes as if he were looking through a pair of spectacles, and grinned widely. <laughs> well, I'll be a rodent's uncle. It's you. You recognize me from the first floor? I asked, eyeing the man suspiciously. This had been the same boozer that caught me unawares after my visit. This had been the same boozer that caught me unawares after my first visit to Crook's shop. It was a strange coincidence I'd run into him here, and I didn't believe in coincidence. That's a good memory you have. The man tossed his bottle to the side, then pressed both hands to his waist and stretched backward. A loud cracking sound echoed through the quiet clearing as his spine bent. You've surely got that old codger's blood running in you. Bent. You've surely got that old codger's blood running in you. Oops. Whoa. How did that happen? In your... And that's a chapter. Oh, I'm so happy to get to this character. <laughs> He's going to be fun, isn't he? He's going to be fun. He shows up more as the story goes along. Hell yeah. Chapter 6 the boss's orders. That old... That old co... That old co... I started to say, but before I could... I started to say, but before I could confirm my suspicions, the drunkard rushed forward, and he was fast. I scarcely managed to block the thick branch he carried as it arced toward my head, his assault pushed me back over a metre, surprising me once again. Nathaniel rushed toward the man, swinging his glaive upward in a long arc. The blade struck the man's waist almost perfectly before slicing cleanly through his chest and exiting his shoulder. Yet there was no blood. As they watched, the grinning image of the man began to shimmer... As they watched, the grinning image of the man began to shimmer and then faded from existence. Look out! He's going for Aurora! Unfortunately, David's voice came too late. The man materialised behind the girl and struck her forcefully between her neck and shoulders. Aurora slumped back silently into a drunkard's... Aurora slumped back silently into the drunkard's arms before either him Aurora slumped back silently into the drunkard's arms before either myself or Nathaniel could intervene. <laughs> what fun! The man laughed, then shoved her unconscious body toward Nathaniel, who caught her gently. Nathaniel eyed the drunkard who suddenly looked serious as he stared at the young man. Keep your distance, friend. Keep your distance, friend. Keep your distance, friend. All will be well if you just leave this man and I to our business, eh? All will be well if you just leave this man and I to our business, eh? Nathaniel cut his eyes toward me. I stared down the drunkard for a few moments, my flawless memory briefly replaying our first encounter. He didn't seem to harbour any malicious intent, and even now there were no warnings from my threat acuity. Not that it would be accurate against someone of his calibre. 
Now, I wonder. Click. Do as he says, I told Nathaniel, as I pulled my blade from its casing. I told Nathaniel, as I pulled my blade from its casing, holding the sheath loosely behind me in my left hand, while I pointed the sword toward my opponents with my right. I'll be all right. Oh, the drunkard looked at Oh, the drunkard looked at me, that amused smile back on his face. He twirled his branch casually in one hand. You're, you're, you're a right confident little whelp, yeah. You're all right. You're a right confident little whelp, yeah. You're a right confident little whelp, yeah? You're a right, you're a right confident little whelp, yeah? His strength and agility are at least level five, possibly level six. His will is undoubtedly higher than mine too, unless he's blocking a praising eye with some sort of skill. I chuckled despite myself and the man's grin grew even broader as he stepped in my direction. Luckily, I've got almost seventy years on him, and with his strength, there's no reason to hold back. I dashed forward before he'd finished his first step. There wasn't a sound as my feet lifted from the forest floor and my body careened toward my opponent. My blade pierced forward, and the drunkard only scarcely dodged it while thrusting his free hand toward my stomach, palm first. Flexing my control over Dash, I forced the ability to shift the momentum to one side, spinning me away from the strike while I lashed out with my cane's shaft at the same time. Spinning me flexing my flexing my control over Dash, I forced the ability to shift the momentum to one side, spinning me away from the strike while I lashed out with my cane's shaft at the same time. It whistled loudly as it screamed toward the drunkard's temple. Before it connected, however, the base of his branch before before it connected, however, the base of his branch knocked the rod up and over his head. He leapt back as my momentum carried me full circle, and my feet slid along the grass as I dropped my dash and came to rest in my original position. My blade pointed toward the man, and my sheath was gripped comfortably behind me. The man's eyes flashed, and his drunken appearance briefly dropped to reveal a severe countenance beneath. Now, when I looked at the scars marring his arms and cheek, he appeared as an experienced veteran, a wielder who'd experienced much in his short life. I frowned, yet as suddenly as it had emerged. I frowned, yet as suddenly as it had emerged, it vanished. He was back to his drunken, goofy state. Yeah, bloody hell. <coughs> I guess I can't go easy on you, eh, boy? He stumbled. He stumbled slightly as he rushed forward faster than I could counter. He stumbled slightly as he rushed forward faster than I could encounter. Fuck. He stumbled slightly. He stumbled slightly as he rushed forward faster than I could counter. Since that wasn't an option, I did the only reasonable thing that came to mind. Affliction. Hex! I whispered both spells as fast as I could. The shadows cast by the afternoon... The shadows cast by the afternoon sun seemed to dance toward my position, wrapping themselves around my sword as I swung to meet the man head-on. He fell drunkenly to the side, so my blade only managed to cut a lock of hair as he trust... He fell drunkenly to the side, so my blade only managed to cut a lock of hair as he thr thrust his fist. He fell drunkenly to the side, so my blade only managed to cut a lock of hair as he thrust his fist into my gut. Gut. <coughs> <coughs> my body flew backward, blood trailing from my open mouth, but I grinned through the pain. His forcing... My body flew backward, blood trailing from my open mouth, but I grinned through the pain. His forcing that dodge to look like an accident would be his downfall. My blade had made its cut, even if it was only the man's hair. It's a fix. Even, 
Even if it was only the man's hair, its effects would take root. His punch would be just as detrimental. Hex would still show results if there was physical contact while the spell was active. I instantly noticed the change, though it wasn't quite as effective as I'd hoped. Shadows from every direction seemed to cling to the man, tugging at his body as if it... Sha Shadows from every direction seemed to cling to the man, tugging at his body as if to slow him down. As a result, the drunkard's movements slowed slightly, by ten percent at the most. It's not much, but it's a start. Though I was mostly building myself to take on the threats of the upper floors, the skills I'd chosen were meant to help close the gap between myself and most higher-class opponents. Also, he could have struck to kill, and he didn't. So I think my hunch was correct. Oi! Why are the three of you little shits? The man stumbled again, and this time it almost seemed genuine. My eyes shot open when I realised what happened. Though it might not have been much of a reduction, the man's foundations had been lowered, and his vitality and endurance were likely now having a tougher time burning off the alcohol still coursing through his veins. And his perception. <coughs> oh, overcast! I spat out a mouthful of blood as I shouted, and grey mist rushed up from the shadows, forming a thick fog that covered a large portion of the clearing. Greater heel! Shroud! The pain in my gut eased significantly once the heel took effect, and I felt my body merge into the darkness as shadows flowed around my skin. Not affecting my vision, I could see the drunkards turn this way and that, not affecting my vision, I could see the drunkard turn this way and that before clumsily coming to a halt and closing his eyes. Where are you, little wilder? Where are you, little wilder? The drunkard sang loud. The drunkard sang loudly spinning in circles slowly with his branch outstretched. He then began to whistle. The sound was loud and shrill enough to shake the fog and the vials in my pack, cutting off one sense to augment the others and then forcing my equipment to vibrate. I slowly knelt. I slowly knelt and placed my hand on the grass as silently as possible. The man twitched slightly as the glass chimed in my pack, though didn't rush forward. Between overcast and shroud, even my yell should be nothing more than a quiet call for most. But if his perception is high enough to pick up on that, at least he's struggling to pinpoint the noise. A stream of light erupted from my fingertips and rushed farther into the dense grey fog, forming a series of complex shapes in the earth. And this switch is to the drunkard's point of view here. Ah, okay. Kale. Kale. All right. Kale listened intently as he let out all of his breath in a high-pitched whistle. Over the years, he'd learned to use his foundations in varying ways. As a result, his control over his body had increased drastically. As a as a result, his control over his body increased drastically, and he could feel the muscles inside himself clench and shift to his whim, allowing him to execute this action without using his skills. He rolled his eyes inwardly. He, he rolled his eyes inwardly, hearing the old man's orders again as he did. Rowan's grandpa. Rowan's grandpa. Okay. Now, Rowan's grandpa is old ancient but he still looks to be in his 20s okay so voice similar to that watch okay watch the wilder family closely and don't allow anything to happen to them while my son ascends i was careful so there should be no connection but keep an eye out for anything suspicious kel recalled his friend and mentor saying with a broad grin 
Kale recalled his friend and mentor saying with a broad grin as he passed over an identification card, a relic shaped like an upside-down heart with an extension on top and a flask of the good stuff. He took the items in his scarred hands, where he had dozens of freshly healed wounds. If Jonathan decides to pursue me, you'll get an alert through that relic when the second chest is opened. Of course, my son won't have the train and you do, but his foundations should be high enough if he has the ability to find it. Of course, of course, my son wouldn't have... Of course, my son wouldn't have the train and you do, but his foundations should be high enough if he has the ability to find it. So, when you test him, just use your foundations, yeah? Oh, come now, Charles. I'm not going to fucking hurt the lad. Kel took a deep gulp of the scorching liquid, grimacing as he felt his soul burn, then shaking as it expanded slightly. He burped and spluttered, causing Charles to laugh. Oh, <laughs> this stuff is absolutely wretched, it is. <laughs> Flash that relic to the young woman at the damned... <laughs> Flash that relic to the young woman at that damned bazaar, and she'll provide you with a monthly crate. Charles shook his head and shifted his monocle slightly, narrowing his eyes. You'd... You'd best make sure not to abuse it. Too much will bring dire consequences. Just a drop more than what's recommended and you'll have to spend weeks in recovery before you begin training again. If you utilise that plague tonic properly, though, you can train and temper your soul quickly without ascending. Unfortunately, it'll do nothing for the ageing process. Unfo Unfortunately, it'll do nothing for the ageing process. But you won't fall too far behind the others, and you can use the Order's resources to level your cards as needed. Now, there w I, I seem to remember there was a letter. I think there was a letter when Rowan opened the, ch the chest in the mm -hmm. first book. And that was from his grandfather or his father? It was from his grandpa to his father. Just okay. like when he's talking about Jonathan here, uh, he's yeah. talking about watching his father. All right, so I'm going to mark this, and I'm going to go reference that voice. Grandpa still doesn't know that Daddy's dead. Right. Too far behind, he says. It's shit compared to the tempering you said wielders go through between floors. Cards as needed. Your cards as needed. <sighs> Too far behind, he says. It's shit compared to the tempering you said wielders go through between floors. Kel said with a sigh then scratched at the back of his head and looked up at the ceiling of the origin floor. Why me, boss? I'll do as you ask. But I want to join you up there. I want to join you up there. With a sigh. I'll do it. I'll do as you ask. I'll do as you ask. But I want to join you up there. You lot have already set up camp on the 51st floor, haven't you? How long you plan on staying? How long you plan on staying? Haven't you? How long you plan on staying? Oh, the youthful looking Charles twirled his moustache with a grimace. We'll be there for a few decades, it seems. Unfortunately, the only way to travel is by flight, and cards that assist with that are few and far between. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, the only way to travel is by flight, and cards that assist with that are few and far between. It'll be another snag, just like floors 44 and 45, where it took centuries to accumulate enough cards to help wielders survive the ocean depths long enough to locate the stairs. I'm afraid we'll have to wait for more factions to catch up. Even with my uh, unique talents, 
We've only managed two methods of transportation, and neither is very reliable. So, there's still a chance I'll meet you there, though. So, there's still a chance I'll meet you there, eh? Kel's eyes sparkled as he stared up into the night sky. Charles smiled sadly and patted the young man on the shoulder. Charles smiled sadly and patted the young man on the shoulder, looking carefully over his arms and then at the deep gash on his cheek. He'd repeatedly proven his worth in the fight for truth and had the scars to prove it. I'll tell you what, lad. I'll tell you what, lad. I'll tell you what, lad. You just turned thirty, yeah? So, if John doesn't open the second chest by the time you're fifty, you can come on up. You'll be turning forty-one that year, and I'm hoping he will choose to settle down and enjoy the rest of his life rather than chase his old man. Kell looked over at Charles excitedly, but then noticed his gaze. Nope, nope, nope. What the fuck? Kell looked over at Charles excitedly, but then noticed his gaze was turned toward the clock hovering over the centre of the origin floor. His jaw was clenched tight, and there was something strange in his countenance. Fear? Oh, that should be near the turn of the century. Oh, that should be near the turn of the century. Charles muttered softly. Wrong character. Oh, Charles. Yeah, yeah. That should be near the turn of the century. That should be near the turn of the century. If there don't seem to be any developments by then, you rush up the tower. I'll give you one year from then to reach us before we resume our ascent. I'll give I'll give you one year from then to reach us before we resume our ascent. I'll give you one year from then to reach us before we resume our ascent. I hope you'll have plenty of stories about my little Jonathan by then. Uh, you won't be coming back? Kel raised an eyebrow. Kel raised a brow. And what about little John, eh? Should I follow and keep an eye on him if he ascends? It ought to save me some time in catching you. No, I won't return. My presence has been noticed, and even though my cover is yet to be realised, I'm a danger to my family. Charles is done. Done? Charles's dull brown eyes stared solemnly into the night. Jonathan has a child now, and that changes things further. If he doesn't do it himself, I expect you to ensure the child attends the academy. You'll observe without intervening. If the kid shows promise, you'll report to me when you ascend, and I'll handle matters. If the kid, if the kid shows promise, you'll report to me when you ascend, and you'll hand. If the kid shows promise, you'll report to me when you ascend, and I'll handle matters from there. But for now, I must cut all ties with the Wilders. If that's what you want, boss. If that's what you want, boss. Kel, sh Kel shrugged. Kel shrugged and took another drink. Kel shrugged and took another drink from the flask, this time only a small sip. He wouldn't give the old man something else to laugh at. I'll handle your child, mind, but you better have something good waiting for me up top, yeah? You'll be more than satisfied. It seems the patrols are coming back around, so it's time we get going. <laughs> You'll be more than satisfied. It seems the patrols are coming back round, so it's time we get going. No, nope. going. So it's time we get going. Charles replied with a chuckle, 
then lightly tapped the head of his cane. Charles replied with a chuckle, then lightly tapped the head of his cane with his forefinger. In an instant, his outfit changed from grey to black. His dull brown eyes were replaced by bright silver, which shone brilliantly in the night. I'll draw their attention while you make for the city. Your existence is still unknown, and I expect it to stay that way. Kell hopped to his feet and prepared to make a break for it, but he paused as the old man stretched out his hand. A sadness overtook him, a feeling he hadn't experienced in many years. He took Charles's hand and gripped it tightly. You asked why it had to be you? Charles released his grip and stepped onto the building's edge. Charles released his grip and stepped onto the building's edge. Kell heard shouting from below the moment the light Kell heard shouting from below the moment the city's lights revealed the man to their pursuers. A broad grin stretched across the man's face. A broad grin stretched across the man's face. That's because I trust you. Besides, you're the only one mental enough to put off your ascension. Besi besides, you're the only one mental enough to put off your ascension. You're the only one. Besides, you're the only one mental enough to put off your ascension. <laughs> <laughs> the man's mighty laugh shook the rooftop as he fell back, arms spread wide. Kell couldn't help but grin at the man's antics. That laugh had always been infectious. Then Kell turned and sprinted the other way, leaping from rooftop to rooftop until the sounds of shouting and spells being cast were far behind him. In the present, Kell shook his head at his lack of focus. He felt weaker after landing that punch which didn't bode well. While waiting for the young man to arrive, he'd been sipping his tonic and keeping himself just at the precipice of where his vitality could counter its effects. Whatever card the kid had used had reduced his limits and pushed him over the edge. He huffed and briefly considered calling it quits before whistling again. The kid had already proven himself capable when he'd slotted the skull with such an abysmal foundation level and deck count but Kell had wanted to see the depths of that capability now that the boy was well armed. But Kell, but Kell, but Kell, but Kell had wanted to see the depths of that capability now that the boy was well armed. Tara be, Tara be damned if he wouldn't pit himself against the boss skin while he had the chance. And Tara be damned if he wouldn't pit himself against the boss skin while he had the chance. He tilted his head toward a muted hum several He tilted his head toward a muted hum several metres away. Most wielders carried potions or draughts of different kinds, and he'd seen the young man regularly using infernal wash to keep himself unsoiled. It was also a reliable method for stealth against beasts, as it washed away most since, but he'd learned a thing or two during his time with the order. His pitch increased again, and that was when he heard it clearly. The sound of glass resonating with his whistle. With a grin, he rushed forward, closing the distance between himself and the young man in seconds. He listened to Rowan's muffled steps as he took off. He listened to Rowan's muffled steps as he took off toward the centre of the fog. Once he'd closed the distance, Kell swung low, aiming for the young man's shins. The branch connected, and he opened his eyes to see Rowan dive forward, roll to his feet, and turn to face him all in one motion. Face him all in one motion. Kell was both impressed and confused by the young man's movements. If Rowan had dodged a moment earlier, he could have avoided the strike entirely. Instead of following up... Instead of following up... Instead of following up... Kell took a moment to scrutinise the kid. There was unwavering confidence in Rowan's silver eyes, and that smile. You're just like him. You're just like him. Kell muttered, then spat to the side, 
grinning as he brandished his weapon. His grin vanished as he lifted the branch. The young man standing before him chuckled and stepped back into the fog. Oi! Oi! What is this rubbish? Oi! What is... What is... What is this rubbish? He swung the limb back and forth, frowning. His movements felt even more sluggish, worse than after... Wor worse than after he... Worse than after he'd first driven his fist into the poor boy's gut. It was subtle, but it was there. He was gradually becoming slower. Carefully, he turned to his left, where he heard Rowan's steps quietly traversing the fog. Kel didn't have a choice. He needed to end this fight quickly. Oh, so much fun! What page are we on here? We are on page 68. So we just made it past 20%, I guess. That's pretty good. Chapter 7. Three Questions. I chuckled at the man's sudden revelation. Whether he was giving me... Whether he was giving me... Whether he was given more away than he meant to in his drunken state, or simply wore his heart on his sleeve, I couldn't tell. Either way, the man was an open book, and I found his reactions amusing. With airy steps, I backed into the fog and circled around my opponent. He continued to swing his weapon, stumbling about as he scowled, yet somehow always managing to keep me at his front. What insanely high perception. Tough to imagine what this man could do if he was serious, his soul must be well developed for a wielder who's only just begun his ascent. But he's a bit... Is this Boozer really from the Order? He continuously shifted his awkward stance, never allowing me to get behind him. I was running out of time. The duel needed to end before Overcast timed out. The duel needed to... The duel needed to end before Overcast timed out. Seeing as there was no escaping the drunkard's acute senses. Seeing as there was no escaping the drunkard's acute senses, it was time to change tactics. I dashed toward him, leaving the fog's shelter and thrusting my blade toward his chest. Psst. Psst. It's about time you came out of there, you brat! The man grinned and flicked his wrist. The branch whistled through the air, smacking the tip of my sword so force. The branch, the branch whistled through the air, smacking the tip of my sword so forcefully that it was ripped from my grasp. It spun into the air, so I then put all my strength into my legs, somersaulting above the man and narrowly avoiding another strike to the gut while following behind the spinning sword. Then, from the corner of my eye. I spotted him turn abruptly and bend his knees to leap after me. I couldn't let that happen. My head ached as I pushed Dash to its limits, turning my body to face the man, upside down as I was. <coughs> my head ached as I pushed the... My head ached as I pushed Dash to its limits, turning my body to face the man, upside down as I was. That sound is that right? Its limits, turning my body to face the man, upside down as I was. I guess so I guess that's all right. Where did that go? The heel of my boot caught my sword's hilt, and I used all the force I could muster to kick the blade toward the man. It screamed through the air, whistling like an arrow as it closed the distance. His eyes widened, and he dove forward awkwardly, avoiding the deadly projectile by less than a few centimetres. 
I strained my soul further, stopping my momentum and forcing Dash to withdraw before its effects was drained. Nope. Effect. I, sp I strained my soul further, stopping my momentum and forcing Dash to withdraw before its effects was drained. Its effect was drained. Fuck. I strained my soul further, stopping my momentum and forcing Dash to withdraw before its effect was drained. The moment the effect ended, gravity took over, and I plummeted, landing squarely behind the man as he completed his roll. He hadn't been prepared to dodge and stumbled clumsily to his feet when his dive ended. I dropped low, spinning and sweeping my leg toward his shins before he could regain his balance. In the same movement, I pulled my blade. In the same moment, I pulled my blade. My weapon dislodged from the earth and again flew in the drunkard's dir My weapon dislodged from the earth and again flew in the drunkard's direction, its tip aiming for the man's shoulder. I grinned. I had him. This fight would end without me revealing my trump cards, and I could get some answers. Then our eyes met. For a brief instant, his eyes were clear of the drunken haze, and I knew I'd been wrong. Our bout wasn't over. The drunkard's muscles tensed, and the air between us exploded. He kicked powerfully off the ground while simultaneously tilting his body back. Tilting his body back. Can I cheat here? Nope, nope, nope. Tilting his body back. Yep, I cheated, and it worked. My leg struck nothing. My leg struck nothing as his body whirled, carrying him safely above. Uh, my leg struck nothing as his body whirled, carrying him safely above my sweeping kick and below my flying blade. I cursed and snatched the hilt of my sword as it sailed over red. Over red. Over red. I cur. I cursed and snatched the hilt of my sword as it sailed over red. The man's feet hit the ground, and he vanished. What? Behind you! At David's warning, at David's sudden warning, I dropped to the ground and felt the rustling of the wind above me. I then dove forward and spun to find the man inspecting a tear in the rags he wore. There was a small spot of blood there. There was a small spot of blood there. Oh! Oh! That almost had me, it did. <clears throat> Not bad at all. He ran a hand through his unruly hair and stumbled slightly. Uh, fucking hell. This mess is going to wear off soon, yeah? Thank you, Dark Creon. He says, you all are by far my favorite narration group. No one else came cl come close in my humble opinion. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you for the kind words. I didn't answer. There were less than 20 seconds on Hex, though that cut to his side had managed to reset affliction and further drop his agility. That didn't leave me long to finish this, and I didn't plan to lose, regardless of his higher foundations higher foundations. <laughs> You're a tough one. <laughs> You're a tough one. <laughs> You're a tough one. I said with a chuckle, then lifted my blade and shifted my balance so that my body tilted slightly forward. <laughs> it seems I'm being discourteous by not giving you my all. Ho-ho! Holding back, were ya? Well, come on then. Let's have it. The drunkard held his branch before him and lifted his other arm, palm out. I didn't need an invitation. I sprinted forward, my chest low to the ground as my legs pushed me as fast as my foundations would allow. Then, with a huff, I threw my shield, my sheath. Then, then... 
With a huff, I threw my sheath as hard as possible toward the man and looked away. Radiance! Bright light filled the space between us and tore a hole in the mist. I cancelled the skill almost instantly before its effects could diminish my shroud. A heavy thud echoed from the centre, followed by a grunt and the sound of wood splintering. The man's weapon had shattered. Kel grunted in annoyance and tossed the ruined weapon off to the side. His eyes were watering, and he could barely see the shape of the young man closing in. He leaned back, scarcely dodging the youth's blade as it sw yeah. He leaned He leaned back, scarcely dodging the youth's blade as it whistled toward him. Ah. He leaned back, scarcely dodging the youth's blade as it whistled toward him. The boy's strikes were muffled by whatever skills he used, making it tough to keep up with the flurry of strikes that followed. Kell stepped back, blinking rapidly and trying to regain his vision while he evaded the rapid attacks. Then, suddenly, the sound of the blade ceased. Kell took the chance to rub the tears away. He opened his eyes and... And... Boo! Boo! Bloody hell! Kel jumped back from the apparition that hovered just centimetres from his face. He could feel his will being attacked, but its appearance had been so sudden that he hadn't had the chance to resist. Was that David or Rowan? That was David. Okay. And this bloody hell! There we go. This bloody hell! Resist. Before he could recover, Rowan was on him. Kell stumbled away, barely avoiding the sword's point as his arms wheeled. He almost regained his balance before the next assault, and then... Crash! Something snatched his legs, and Kell fell to the ground. His back slammed into the dirt, and his breath left his body. He tried to stand, but before he could, he felt the tip of a thin blade pressed against the nape of his neck. Ah, uh, damn it, kid! Out of here! His voice trailed off. His voice trailed off when he saw what had tripped him. Nah. His voice trailed off when he saw what had tripped him up. Several vines had broken through the soil and wrapped tightly around his legs. He chuckled and turned toward the youth as the sword was pulled away. Rowan stood behind him with an amused smile. A small pixie sat on one of his shoulders, giggling. Over his shoulder, Kel could see the young apparition that had... Kel could... Over his other shoulder, Kel could see the young apparition that had spooked him, hovering upside down, grinning and obviously trying not to laugh. At the same time, whatever status effects he was under lifted, and his senses cleared. He didn't believe that to be a mere coincidence. Boy! Kel shook his head and rose to his feet. Looking at you is just like looking at Charles. Spitting image, I'd say. Anyway, you passed. You won, fair and square. Ask what you want and I'll answer best I can. You got three questions. After that, I'll say what I need to and be on my merry way. Three questions. After that, I'll say what I need to and be on my... After that, I'll say what I need to and be on me merry way. David, Rosie, thank you both for your... Huh. David, Rosie, thank you both for the assistance. I said, 
dismissing my summons before withdrawing overcast and rescinding the other cards that were currently active. The drunkard stood a few paces away, digging through a large brown satchel. I hadn't even seen him retrieve it from the base of the tree. I go by Rowan, though I'm sure you're already aware. And you are? <sighs> Call me Kel, mate. He didn't look up from his rummaging as he spoke. He pulled a large flask from the bag and shook it gently. Ah, crap. He pulled a large He pulled a large flask from the bag and shook it gently. A sloshing sound came from the container, and he grinned merrily. <laughs> I knew I had another. Now, what is it you want first, lad? Let's get this bit over with. Only three questions? I considered the man for a moment, while going over the little I'd learned about Grandpa Charles and the Order over the past few weeks. And the Order over the past few weeks. Let's try again. I can... I considered the man for a moment, while going over the little I'd learned about Grandpa Charles and the Order over the past few weeks. It wasn't much. Much. Mm, I should hear him out first. No point wasting a question that he might answer on his own. How's about we hear what you have to say first? I looked around for my companions and saw Nathaniel leaning on a tree at the edge of the clearing. Aurora sat beside him, whispering something to Nathaniel and staring daggers at Kill. You got the makings of a... You got the makings of a good crew. Kell tossed something toward me, which I caught with my free hand. I wasn't surprised when I saw what it was, an ebony badge in the shape of a pointed heart with a stem jutting from the top. That ought to show you... That ought to show I am who I say I am. Normally, you'd be showing me yours before we have this chat, but I know who you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. I nodded and tossed the badge back to him. He shoved it in his bag and sat cross-legged on the ground, motioning for me to do the same. Not wanting to be rude, I followed suit, casting cleanse on myself as I did. The dirt and grime built up during the fight vanished, and I felt far more at ease. You want to call your friends? You want to call your friends here for this? Kel asked. Kel asked before uncorking his flask. <coughs> Kel asked before uncork. Kel asked before uncorking his flask. Kel asked before uncork. Uh, uncorking and cook. Kel asked before uncork. Uncorking. Kel asked before uncorking his flask. Before uncorking his flask. Before uncorking his flask. Kel asked, Kel asked, before uncorking his flask and taking a large gulp. He smacked his lips and wiped them on the back of his sleeve. I shook my head. Not that I plan to keep secrets from them, but it's not time. The drunkard nodded. Yeah, that's fine then. <clears throat> Just keep it in your head that once you bring someone into the order, you're responsible for them. Now, on to business. You passed your test, so you're good to be one of us if that's what you want. No. 
spotted. Yeah, that's fine then. <clears throat> Just keep it in your head that once you bring someone into the order, you're responsible for them. Now, on to business. You passed your test, so you're good to be one of us if that's what you want. If I have to be honest, I don't know enough to make that decision. If I have to be honest, I don't know enough to make that decision. I replied with a shrug, though as long as it won't interfere with my plans to ascend, I have no qualms. Right then, Kel pulled another item from his satchel, this one a small pad. First, you got to meet with young Miss down at that damned bazaar in Grand Art. With the young Miss, did I say that? First, you got to meet with young Miss down at that damned bazaar in Grand Art. I said the the was kind of hard to hear, but I think it's all right. So that badge Charles left you, and she'll give you the ins and outs of the order. Don't be approaching no one else until you talk to her, yeah? What Charles left makes you look like a higher-ranking member, and that. What what Charles left. What Charles left makes you look like a higher ranking member, and those that don't. What Charles left makes you look like a higher ranking member, and those that don't know you might smell that something's off. Wouldn't be good to lose your head for something. Wouldn't be good to lose your head for something simple as that. I blinked a few times. The note Grandpa Charles had left said that I could access specific amenities in many of the Church of Damnation's establishments. I found myself glad that I hadn't attempted it. That's basically it! Kel flip. I keep wanting to say Kel. It's the wrong accent. Kel flipped the pages in his book and scratched his head. I could have sworn there was more. Well, must not be important then. You go ahead and ask your questions so we can get out of here. If this man is really part of the order, I'm anxious to see what the rest are like. I traced my thumb around my cane's handle, considering what I should ask the man. It may have been a waste of a question, yet I couldn't help but ask. Yet I couldn't help but ask. How did you get involved with my grandfather? Hmm. Starting with the hard ones first, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Starting with the hard ones first, are we? There ain't much to that story, actually. Charles got my ass out of a bind with the Inquisitor and gave me a choice to either follow him or be on my way. Naturally, I chose the former. He needed a man that hadn't yet ascended. Ascended. I studied the man as he stared into the canopy of leaves above us. Part of me wanted more details, but I knew that. Part of me wanted more details, but I knew that would have to wait until another time. He took another drink and met my gaze. Ah, I like you all right, mate. <clears throat> but I don't plan on sitting here all night exchanging pleasantries. So let's get on with it, yeah? Ah. Ah. Thanks. Ah. I like you all right, mate.
He rolled his shoulders and looked toward the stairs. I've had enough of being your nanny. I've had enough of being your nanny. I've had enough of being your nanny. It's high time I get moving. How long have you been watching me? I asked. He quirked a brow. Strange thing to ask. Don't care to know about the order? Not that I can answer much. I'm just the muscle. I'm just the muscle. I shrugged. I'll learn about the order on my own. I'd rather know more about you and your relationship with my family. Kel looked at me for a long while, even downing another two swigs before responding. I can't tell you much about your family, lad. I've been watching you since you were a wee babe. I've been, I've been watching you since you were a wee babe. Charles left shortly after you were born, and your pops tried to chase after him. Your ma passed early. Your ma passed early. That's about it. Nothing you don't know already. I only knew Charles briefly, but he was a good man. Oh. Nothing you don't know already. I only knew Charles briefly, but he was a good man. Loved you a lot, he did. He loved you a lot, he did. Kel continued. Kel continued, then looked at the ground. He left to keep you and John safe. A lot of good that did. Said someone was after him. Worried Charles in... Worried Charles enough that he cut all communication with the Order, aside from his party, that is. Someone was after him. That goes with what his letter said, but you haven't heard from him that... You haven't heard from him then? That struck me as odd. Does that mean that he doesn't know about my father? How can you be sure he's alive? <laughs> That's three questions there on their own. Kel smiled sadly. Kel smiled sadly. But you're right. As far as I'm aware, Charles doesn't know about your pa. They went dark after giving me my orders. Said the next batch of floors would take time to prep for. As for whether or not the old bastard's still alive... As, as for whether or not the old bastard's alive. The man rummaged through his bag again before standing and shuffling toward me. If this air goes cold, if uh, this air goes cold, that means his body has too. If uh, this air goes cold, that means... His body has to. He offered his hand, and I took it, allowing him to help me to my feet. A warmth spread across my palm as Kel shoved an object into my grasp. When he pulled his arm away, I found that I was holding a tiny silver marble. Warmth radiated from the sphere, and I recognised it immediately. A life bead. Name? Life bead. Class? Bound relic. Rank? One. Description. A keepsake for loved ones. Informs the holder of the bound wielder's condition. Effect one. The wielder binds this object. This item will emit a soft warmth as long as the wielder draws breath. Should the wielder perish, the stone will grow cold. Bound to Charles Wilder. This is... I looked up, intending to thank the man. But he was gone. The shuffling of two pairs of footsteps sounded behind me. Smiling, I stored the bead in a concealed pocket and turned to my companions. Rowan, is everything all right? Rowan! 
Owen, is everything all right? Aurora called as she jogged up beside me. I'd me. <sighs> Who was that man? <sighs> Just an old friend. <laughs> Just an old friend of the family checking up on me. Really checking up on me. <laughs> Just an old friend of the family checking up on me. Old friend of the family checking up on me. I replied with a smile, then nodded to Nathaniel as he closed in. Is everything sorted? Ready to go if you are, Nathaniel told me. Very well, then. <clears throat> Very well, then. I threw my bag over my shoulders and took one last look around the clearing. Let's head to the third floor. Kel watched the group ascend from his place in the... Kel watched the group ascend from his place in the upper branches of the forest. Rowan had surprised him. Though Kel had known of the pixie, the boy had already managed an though, though Kel had known of the pixie, the boy had already managed another summon in the short time he wasn't watching. He turned up his flask and chugged down the rest of the contents. <laughs> okay. So... I'm going to have to do a sound effects call here because I literally cannot burp on command. Oops. Big old Gimli burp. A mighty roar left him as the air escaped his stomach. The tree shook violently, and he could hear its leaves falling all around him. Oh, bloody hell! Kel shook his head. Kel shook his head. Kel shook his head in surprise. Maybe I should stop drinking. He lay back. He lay back on the broad branch and crossed his arms behind his head. Looking at the ceiling, he had become... Looking at the ceiling had become a habit. Looking at the ceiling had become a habit over... Looking at the ceiling had become a habit of his over the... Looking at the ceiling had become a habit of his over the years, and he couldn't help but feel giddy. God damn it. And he, and he couldn't help but feel giddy a habit of his over the years, and he couldn't help but feel giddy. Just how much stronger can I become? Just how much stronger can I become? And can I really reach Charles before they make their move? Either way, this was it. Kel felt his obligations had been met, and he was finally going to begin his ascent. The world started to spin as the effects of that last drink washed over him, he groaned and closed his eyes. But first, a nap. That's another chapter in the books. Hope everybody here is having a good day. Let's see, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one more chapter for today, and then I'll start another cold read tomorrow at noon again. 
I think I'm going to do three cold reads total, maybe. This is such a short one, maybe it'll be only two, but we'll see That's how far That's about 25% right there. That was, uh, we're on page 80 out of 340, 344, something like that. Gotcha. Okay, so we're... We're doing good as far as percentages. So tomorrow, if I do another 15%, that, sh that should be as much as I usually do for cold reads. So I hope you guys are having fun while you're still here. Um, and of course, uh, you know, speak up in the chat if you ever have questions, if you have things you want to say to the author, anything like that. I will let him know. Chapter 8. Chapter 8. Detour. Aurora groaned as they trudged through the thick mire of the northern forest. She knew it was her fault they were taking this route, but that didn't mean she had to enjoy it. Just as she was lamenting, suggesting this to the group, a wave of cool, clean air washed over her. Glancing forward, she saw a fading white aura. Glancing forward, she saw a fading white aura. Glancing forward, she saw a f she saw a fading. Glancing forward, she saw a fading white aura covering Nathaniel and Rowan. The built-up sweat and grime vanished from the group, and she sighed in relief. Though she'd been annoyed with Rowan's constant use of cleanse at first, Aurora had come to appreciate his consistency with it. Not only did it keep them clean, but due to it purifying the interior of the body as well as the exterior. Not, o not only did it keep them clean, but due to its puri purifying, I almost said putrefying. Not only did it keep them clean, but due to its puri but due to it purifying the interior. Not only did it keep them clean. Not only did they not only not only did it keep them clean, but due to its purifying the interior of the body as well as the exterior, they never had to waste time relieving themselves. She hadn't known of that effect until recently. It had been a long couple of days for her. After Rowan's encounter with that insufferable drunkard scoundrel, they'd immediately climbed to the third floor. Within the space between floors, she'd received a crystal worth 3,500 essence from the tower as her reward for ascending. It was generous, being they'd hardly managed any achievements, and the majority of the prize came from clearing the floor within such a short time. That was nothing they hadn't been taught in the academy, which Rowan had told her was because the instructors emphasised caution and wanted their students to take their time on each floor. That was, that was something they hadn't been taught in the academy, which Rowan had told her was because the instructors emphasised caution and wanted their students to take their time on each floor, preparing and growing stronger for the next. She focused on the young man again, squinting curiously. Aurora found the man odd. He constantly acted like her instructor, and even Nathaniel's at times. Nathaniel, a scion of one of the great families, being treated as a student by someone of their age. Yet, not once had the impossibly powerful youth taken offence to Rowan's advice, even adjusting his stances and fighting styles according to their cane-wielding companion's suggestions. Rowan knew so much about, well, everything and she hadn't missed him saying that her killer was Zachary Gray. I think I, I forgot that part. He, did he tell her that Zachary Gray was going to be, was going to kill her, or? He briefly mentioned it uh, while he was staring out the curtains. Got right you. before she passed out on his couch or somewhere around there. Right after she woke up, perhaps. Um, this was like he was talking to Nathaniel and she overheard it. He was just kind of talking out loud to himself like he does. Gotcha. The killer was Zachary Gray. She shivered, recalling the moment her memories had come flooding back to her. The constant itch and pains of her precognition had plagued her for days. Then, out of nowhere, they were gone. And the next morning, Rowan said he'd taken care of the problem. And the, next mo and the next morning, Rowan said he'd taken care of the problem. That was the moment she decided to humour him, and the surprises hadn't stopped there. 
During their train ride to the capital of the origin floor, he'd constantly fed them vague information about how they should clear the floors, mentioning details she knew for a fact hadn't been available within the Academy's library. They hashed out the terms of their party contract during the ride, and his terms were more than fair. Generous, even, since he planned on providing the means for them to both acquire wealth and ascend. It was Nathaniel's presence and acceptance of the arrangement that had driven her to steal her resolve. The man always had a stern look about him, but no one in the Academy ever questioned his morals. He was a force of nature, had always intervened when someone was being harassed, and... He was a force of he was a force of nature, had always intervened when someone was being harassed, and never once had she heard of him abusing his family name to get ahead, unlike many other scions. His unwavering gaze when he signed the contract, and Rowan's assurance that they would help find information about her father, had erased most of her doubts. Besides, she felt that the young Seward knew that Besides, she felt that the young Seward knew about Rowan's little secret. She'd questioned him about it, but the man never answered. Seward. 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 Besides, she felt that the young Seward... Besides, she felt that the young Seward knew about Rowan's little secret. She'd questioned him about it, but the man never answered. His stony expression had cracked, and one side of his lips quirked up in a hardly discernible smile before shifting back to normal, but that was as much as she'd gotten. She had her suspicions about their de facto leader. She had her suspicions about their de facto leader, but decided to keep them to herself. Though they had signed a contract, they weren't exactly close, and Aurora felt it would be rude to push. For now, she would trust the two men, and hopefully they would return that sentiment in the future. Rowan had already revealed a tremendous secret in showing them his origin card. His origin card. Aurora's head still ached whenever she thought of the glowing, translucent copy. It stood to reason that if the group could properly make use of it, their party could amass wealth equal to that of a small guild. After s <clears throat> Small guild. After seeing that, she had no doubts that his promise to fund the alteration of her... After seeing that, she had no doubts that his promise to fund the alteration of her build was genuine. She was excited by the prospect, and though she hadn't talked it over with the others, she was ex she was excited by the prospect, and though she hadn't talked it over with the others, she decided what direction she wanted to take after ugh. she was excited by the prospect, and though she hadn't talked it over with the others, she decided what direction she wanted to take after asking Rowan a few questions. She shook her head. The man was like a walking tower encyclopedia and card compendium rolled into one. Whether the man had a card that could tell the future or pull information out of thin air, she wasn't sure, but whatever it was, he'd easily answered almost all of her questions about synergies between certain cards. He'd easily answered almost all of her questions. But whatever it was, but whatever it was, but whatever it was, he'd easily answered almost all of her questions about synergies between certain cards. Aurora. Aurora! She looked up to find Rowan waving that strange cane in front of her face. <clears throat> in front of her face. Aurora! Aurora! She yeah. looked up. She looked up to find Rowan waving that strange cane in front of her face and gasped. She'd been looking at her feet and hadn't heard or seen him approach. Not that she was surprised. Whatever his build was, she could hardly follow his movements in this shady place and had to trust that Nathaniel hadn't lost him as she followed the broad-shouldered man. 
whatever his build, whatever his build was. She could hardly follow his movements in this shady place and had to trust that Nathaniel hadn't lost him as she followed the bor- Whatever his build was, she could hardly follow his movements in this shady place and had to trust that Nathaniel hadn't lost him as she followed the broad-shouldered man. Y yes she asked. She asked. I'm sorry. I got lost in my thoughts. Rowan smiled warmly at her, and an image of her grandfather crossed her mind, staring down at her with a toothy grin when she'd been caught taking a biscuit from her dad's secret stash. She looked away quickly out of reflex, and the boy chuckled. The boy chuckled. <laughs> you be careful with that mind of yours. Though she could tell his words were strict, his smile didn't drop. The boy chuckled. <laughs> you be careful with that mind of yours. Your intelligence is too high for your wisdom, which is why your thoughts stray so often. It'll be more manageable once your mental foundations are more evened out, but you should focus those rapid thoughts on alternating between your five senses. Honing your perception is essential. The better you can control each of those senses at lower levels, the more potent it will be once it increases. B once it increases. Aurora sighed, not because of Rowan's lecture, in which he was strangely competent, but because she already knew that information and had let her mind get away from... Not because, not because of Rowan's lecture, in which he was strangely competent, but because she already knew that information and had let her mind get away from her again. The Academy had been strict on training its students, training... The Academy had been strict on training its students' bodies. The Academy had been strict on training its body its students' bodies. The Academy had been strict on training its students' bodies and minds in the early years before their spirits had become dense enough to handle more essence. But even b But even knowing that fact, she'd been struggling with her focus ever since her intelligence had surpassed her wisdom. Damn it. But but, even knowing that fact, she'd been struggling with her focus ever since her intelligence had ins- Ah, oh, fuck. But, even knowing that fact, she'd been struggling with her focus ev ever since- But, even knowing that fact, she'd been struggling with her focus ever since her intelligence had surpassed her wisdom, and her low will made her thoughts even harder to tame. <clears throat> ah, <laughs> Sorry about the speech. Old habits die hard. Rowan scratched the back of his head, and Aurora rolled her eyes. There he went again with those odd expressions. If they hadn't spent years together on the first floor, where she'd witnessed his growth, she'd feel like he was talking to some geezer who descended up. If they, if they hadn't spent years together on the first floor, where she'd witnessed his growth, She'd feel like she was talking to some geezer who'd descended from the upper floors. Fuck. Hey, what's up, Mystic Barking Cow? Good to see you. Thanks for coming. If they hadn't sp <laughs> If they hadn't spent years together on the first floor, where she'd witnessed his growth, she'd feel like she was talking to some geezer who'd descended from the upper floors. Anyway, he continued, <clears throat> Are we still heading in the right direction? Has your precognition acted out in any way? Aurora shook her head. No, I still feel warmth coming from my connection with it. Trust me, if we started veering off the course it wanted to take, I wouldn't have been able to get lost in my thoughts the way I did. Aurora shook her head. No, I still feel warmth from my connection with it. 
Rowan frowned slightly. <coughs> Rowan. Rowan frowned slightly and patted her shoulder. I know what it feels like to push yourself when you're not ready. How's your soul? Is it still weakened from shoving so much essence into precognition after you received it? There are still a few cracks in the walls around my spirit, but it has mostly mended, and it feels... stronger than before? Aurora replied. Nope. Aurora replied, scrunching her nose at Rowan's use of the word soul. Typically, only zealots would call it that, and they purposely avoided teaching it that way in the academy. She found it odd that Rowan, who had openly spoken against the two churches and their travels, used it the way he did. The term soul suggested the existence of something greater, while spirit was used to describe the physical manifestation of the essence one absorbed through their deck. Absorbed <coughs> through their deck. The term... The term soul suggested the existence of something greater, while spirit was used to describe the physical manifestation of the essence one absorbed through their deck. It should, Rowan nodded. What you did was thick-headed. Your soul in this situation is no different from calloused hands, shredded muscles, or amended bone. What you, what you did was thick-headed. Your soul in this situation is no different from calloused hands, shredded muscles, or amended bone. On the other hand, you didn't bust it up. On the other hand, you didn't bust it up enough to cause any permanent damage, so all's well that ends well, eh? Just, uh, don't go doing anything so reckless in the future. Future. You don't have to worry about that. Aurora clenched her fists. She still hadn't forgiven herself for her own carelessness. She, she still hadn't forgiven herself for her own carelessness. After reaching level three with precognition, her spirit had already felt strained, yet the card had kept eating at her, driving her to pour the last of her essence atop it. It hadn't caused her pain at the time, it hadn't caused her pain at that time, only mild discomfort that wouldn't cease. She'd been both naive and hopeful, believing that perhaps the irritation... She, she'd been both naive and hopeful, believing that perhaps that irritation... She'd been both naive and hopeful, believing that perhaps that the... Perhaps the... Perhaps the... She'd been both naive and hopeful, believing that perhaps the irritation would stop it if it were would stop if it were at a higher level. Fuck. She'd been both naive and hopeful, believing that perhaps the irritation would stop if it were at a, if it were at a higher level. Fuck. She'd been both naive and hopeful, believing that perhaps the irritation would stop if it were at a higher level. If it wasn't a baseless thought... It... It wasn't a baseless thought, but she'd been wrong. Her spirit had splintered after forcing so much essence into it at once, and the discomfort had turned to pain, like the card's prodding was leaking through the cracks so that it could force her to act. However, that was the moment she'd had her first vision. That was what had taken her to Grand Art. And ultimately, that was that... And, and ultimately, that was the mistake that had led her... And, ultim and ultimately, that was the mistake that had led her to Nathaniel wandering aimlessly in the back alleys while being pursued. She still didn't understand how the man had gotten lost, but it had all worked out in the end. And now, precognition was once again forcing her hand, though the pangs it caused were much weaker now that her spirit was mostly healed. Unfortunately, due to a mixture of her damaged spirit and her weak foundations, she still couldn't ignore the card or will it to act as she wished. It had been a relief when Rowan had humoured her request earlier that day, so instead of heading directly east... It had, 
It had been a relief when Rowan had humoured her request earlier that day, so instead of heading directly east toward where he said the stairs would be, damn. It had been a relief when Rowan had humoured her request earlier that day, so instead of heading directly east toward where he said the stairs would be, they'd started on a long detour, blazing new paths through the thick brush toward the north. All right. All right, let's keep going. Rowan returned to the group's centre and stood behind Nathaniel, who took point. I hear running water not too far ahead. Another few hundred metres, if I'm right. Nathaniel swung his glaive, clearing another small thicket. His muscles rippled beneath his form-fitting suit, and Aurora quickly averted her eyes before she was caught staring. Could be closer. All this foliage is blocking the sound. Makes it hard to be accurate. Aurora strained her ears, but heard nothing. She sighed and followed along, hoping that one day she could be of more use to the party. From the corner of my eye, I noticed Aurora tilt her head, tilt her head. From the corner of my eye, I noticed Aurora tilt her head, trying to hear the water we were heading toward. I also didn't miss the downcast expression that followed, which made me hope she wouldn't be too hard on herself. It's not healthy for her to compare herself to us. I sighed inwardly. Well, she should feel more valuable after this venture. Precognition shouldn't be dragging her all this way for nothing. Nathaniel had had access to unique training methods before he left for the academy, so even if he stopped using their resources for training after deciding to be his own man, it wasn't like he'd forgotten what he knew. His soul had to be exceptional. By my estimations, his foundations are all level five, and he likely has at least two at l By my by my estimations, his foundations are all level five, and he likely has at least two at level six. Although impressive, I'm certain he's near his soul's limit with just the essence he's invested in his foundations. Despite my having the finest methods available to the network, condensing my soul took time, and Nathaniel hasn't had enough of that yet. Even if his deck is full of holy cards, a remarkable feat in itself, most probably aren't higher than... Most probably aren't higher than level two. We'll have a... We'll have a talk once we reach the fifth floor. I rubbed my thumb against the haft of my cane, feeling the minute etchings within. The cool handle against my palm was soothing, and the sensation of the fu... Ferule. Feral. Feral. And the sensation of the fu... The cool handle again. The cool handle against my palm was. So the cool handle against my palm was soothing, and the sensation of the ferrule at the end tapping lightly against the moss and dirt reminded me of my younger days. If only I discovered your secrets before losing you. I gripped the weapon tighter. It was one of the few tokens I had of my father, and when I thought of the appraiser that had... And, and when I... And when I thought of the appraiser that had deceived me... No matter. That swindler likely did me a favour. Me a favour. 
With my former condition, knowing about Grandpa Charles and the Order would have gotten me killed. The Order. I still had questions, yet I didn't regret what I'd asked Kel. I'd never met Grandpa Charles, at least not that I could remember, and I wanted to know if my father's stories about him were true. If he didn't have the same qualities Pops had described, I wasn't sure I'd want to take part in whatever he was into. But Kel had some... But Kel had some of the same views on the man, and I felt knowing more about the Order would help me understand the Tower. Well, not like I can back out now. Kel made it clear that I'd accepted becoming a member of... Kel made it clear that I'd accepted becoming a member by hearing him out, and there's no telling what consequences I'll face if I ignore those instructions. I can hear it. The sudden proclamation caused Nathaniel to stop, and we both turned to see Aurora blushing with her hand over her mouth. Ah, sorry. I chuckled, then motioned for Nathaniel to continue, and it wasn't long before the sound of rushing water drowned out the noises of the forest. We pushed through a group of trees grown so closely together that they formed a wall, stepping out into the glaring afternoon sun. Nathaniel held his weapon out to keep us from walking forward, and I heard Aurora gasp at the moment she cleared the trees. She wasn't the only one who found themselves astonished. I stood with my mouth agape, staring down into the deep hollow. I, st I stood with my mouth agape, staring down into a... I stood with my mouth agape, staring down into a deep hollow. There was nothing in my memories about this, and I couldn't recall having seen a marking here on any map. What? What is this? Aurora asked, looking toward me. Looking toward me expectantly. I shook my head. For once, I don't have an answer. Water poured into the gaping maw from a large rivulet that likely stemmed from the river running from the mountains to our northeast. The ravine wasn't large, its width so narrow that I could leap across without using dash, and its length wasn't much different. But it was deep. I peered cautiously over the pit's edge, where it opened into a large grotto. Within the dimly lit cavern, I could see where the stream fell into a sizable lake. Within the, within the dimly lit cavern, I could see where the stream fell into a sizable lake, as well as a pile of items directly below the opening. Aurora knelt. Aurora knelt near the edge and gulped. Aurora. Aurora knelt near the edge and gulped. I think this is where I'm supposed to be. To be. Is that so? I mused, then glanced at the trees behind us. Nathaniel, do you have any cord in your pack? What I have will only get us halfway. What I have will only get us halfway. He stated calmly. I put my bag down, undid the clasp, and gestured toward one of the lower hanging branches on a nearby tree. Then we have enough. Toss me one end and fasten the other around that limb. It's getting late, and this looks as good a place as any to set up for the night. We'll be able to make a fire without being seen, and I'm sure we could all do with a warm meal, eh? Michael Kane. Michael Kane's in the audience. <laughs> I'm Michael Kane. <laughs> a warm meal, eh? Uh <clears throat> The others nodded, and we worked together to secure. The others nodded, and.
and we worked together to secure the ropes before tossing them over the edge of the hole farthest from the small waterfall. <coughs> the others nodded, and we worked together to secure the ropes before tossing them over the edge of the hole farthest from the small waterfall. The end just barely caught the water's edge, and I studied the water for a few mu- The end- the end just barely caught the water's edge, and I studied the water for a few minutes. Fuck. The end just barely caught the water's edge, and I studied the water for a few minutes. Eyes narrowed. We'd be dismounting on the shore, but my intuition told me we should be careful. I recalled the description of the card Aurora had shown Nathaniel and me. I recall. I recalled the description of the card Aurora had shown Nathaniel and me a couple of weeks ago. At times, both peril and fortune walk hand in hand. All right, I'll go first and set an anchor. Aurora, you go next. I'll pull you in once you... I'll pull... I'll pull you in once you get close to the bottom. Nathaniel, bring up the rear. I shouldered my pack and tied the straps around my waist. Glad I didn't skimp on the necessities. The rope was crafted from the fur of the same plagued beast I'd farmed several times on the tenth floor. Don't fall in the water. Don't fall in the water. I cautioned. I cautioned the other two before leaping back into the crater. All right, cool. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for coming to hang out. Kerberos, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us as well. I will be back at it. Oh. I will be back at it noon central tomorrow. So, um, Kerberos, if you can, if you want to join, that's totally cool. If you can't, that's totally cool too. No biggie. We got you on this one. So, um, it was it was good to have you. Just send me a link. I should be able to. It depends on whether or not we've picked my son up from school yet. Gotcha. All right. I will send that link. And everybody here, thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. Um, tell everybody, if you like watching these cold reads, tell people that you know. Tell other people that listen to audiobooks um, that uh, this is a fun time. And I'll be posting in the Discord and in our Facebook. And, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel. That'll notify you as well when you when we go on so that is noon central tomorrow and we're going to go for another three hours and i think we'll just be done for cold reads for the rest of the book i should be able to just finish the rest of the book by the end of the week as well um because even though i did 15 percent here it was only three hours so you know i could put four or five hours in thursday and friday and get real close to being finished anyway you guys have a good one and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. See you all tomorrow.